property management. Hey, uh, I'm a tenant here at the apartments. Uh, I, I just, um, you know, I found a milk door inside my wall. And I, I wanted to make sure it's a, what? a milk door. I was I I had all my drywall taken down in the living room because I'm, I'm I'm doing something. And uh, there's a milk door in so there. Believe it or not, you're a tenant in our building. Yes. And you've taken something apart in your apartment. Oh, just the drywall. Just just on two of the walls. I was looking for um, stuff in the walls. Why are you taking apart our walls? Okay, ma'am, I think you're you're missing first, the point here. First of all, there's a milk door. First of all, who who are you? Roy. I'm like Roy. Yeah, it's it's kind of on the front of the house near where the front door is, and it's like a little you, mi- miniature door. You? Ma'am, stop interrupting. So, it's like a where little Where do you live? On where way. Where do you live? On Remington Way. Can you interrupt it again? But what tell me what unit you Why live in? Why are you in yelling here? at me? It's Christmas. Well, I you you know what? I know, but you got to tell me who you are and where you live. I, I'm for one thing. I was trying to get to that, ma'am. I found a milk door, and I want to refurbish it. I, I want to have a milk door on the front of my apartment from now, from now on. You can't. You can't. No, you cannot do that. Yes. Where do you live? Ma'am, what is your apartment? I checked. They have milk delivery. There's a company called Royco's Milk Delivery Service. I'm gonna. Listen I've to already me. called them up. Listen it's to me. Cheaper. You, I own. We own the building. Where do you? What is your address? Two, tw- way, I think. What I don't know. unit number? I get my mail at a PO box. PO box. It, uh, you know what? If you don't know where you live, why are you yelling at me? I, well, I want to know where you live. I, okay, you're, look, you're I'm doing s- something to my building that you have no right to do. I was just looking in it the walls for stuff. What in the, you're not supposed to look in the walls. Okay, well, I just wanted to see, and now I see that, well, I mean, there was a milk door. It was worth it, right? I was looking for, like, Depression-era hooch. The what? Depression, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the moonshine and stuff that they used to make back in the day? In the walls. We don't have moonshine. This no, in building, the walls. These buildings are only 14, or only 17 years old. Oh, well, that makes sense. Why is there a milk door in here, then? That's something I would expect there to find in a, a milk old building. Door. What, uh, what unit are you in? 119, I think. I don't have any one. You live at 20? Yeah, way. So I'm on the first floor. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the one with the new milk door. I went ahead and I went it outside. It doesn't matter. I started, here, ma'am, here. Ma'am, no. I, ma'am, 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 no. I, I started pulling the bricks no. off the building to get to the milk door from the outside. Okay, where the fuck is your address? Tell me where you live. Why are you yelling at me? Because I want to know where cry. you're living. Because if you're tearing my apartment building apart, I need to know. I'm not tearing what is it your up. Address? It was there before, and you guys covered it, it up. It was not there. No, we did not. Because... I, are you honestly, do you honestly rent from property management? Of course, yes. I was okay, what is your name? Roy. We've already been over this. I gave you all this. No, I know. Uh, what I mean, is your address? My apartment is a mess. I really need to put this drywall back up and tape it. Okay, but if Scotch your tape. apartment is a mess, I need to know where you're at. Because well, I am going to send my maintenance man over. Oh, no. No, no, me and him. We, oh, we yes, don't, I am. We don't, we're we're on a different level, me and that guy. We're we're not on the same channel. You know what I mean? Um. Well, I don't know where. What? I don't have a Roy that lives in my apartment. Well, I wouldn't be in the computer. Building. Well, you should be. If you rent from me, you should be in the computer. Well, I'm glad I'm not, because you were like saying the f word at me earlier. What, what was that all about? I want to know I church, where. Ma'am. What apartment? I want to know what apartment you live in. The um, the one on way. Honey, I have four buildings, forty-four. I have forty-four units over there. Well, now you're just what bragging. What is your apartment it sounds, number? Sounds like you're just trying to impress me, ma'am. I'm taken. I'm not trying to impress you, honey. I want to know what your address is. Okay, well, you're bragging about units and you know buildings. Honey, I don't really care. I mean, I manage. I manage. Almost 200 units. Oh, there you okay. go again. Here. I know pretty much all of my my I'm, tenants. I'm so, I don't have a Roy that rents from me. I'm so impressed. Okay. 
<laughs> you got a fucking nut missing, buddy. Losers. You got a fucking nut missing. Did you just call me stupid? The dog is not a freaking robot. You're an asshole. Are you fucking nuts? Fucking nuts? You asshole. <laughs> Are you losing your mind? I am a bitch from hell. You can butthole. What does that look like? Oh, give me a fucking break. Bit, 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 bitch from hell, and I will find out. Fuck you and your hundred down ten, okay? Fuck you and your hundred down ten. You You're listening home. to the Snowplow Show. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. You just don't need that shit, right? 100.3, the gerbil. You're gonna put me on the radio. This is very fucking good. You know what I meant. Quit playing games with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you and your underground down okay? Okay, butthole. What does that look like? You You're asshole. listening to the Snowplow Show. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. Hey everyone, you're listening. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. Whoa! Time out. Time out. They're all going to hell. As long as we agree, I think going to hell. What you think? The person that does this going to hell. No advance. No going to hell. The person that changed this decision first. Going to hell. That person has to be fired. You are listening to the Snowplow Show. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. Hey everyone, you're listening. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. You got a fucking duck. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Brad, and as you may have guessed from that intro song by Joe DeVita, you're listening to the Snowplow Show. Today is May 11th, 2021, and this one is brought to you by Vokok Meat Vokoviak. Marcus Biscuit, The Sailboat, Unavailable Restaurant, and Carl, with three exclamation points. He's really excited about his name. Those five people are just a few of the listeners supporting us over at patreon.com slash phone losers. And it is 100% their fault that you're about to hear a best of show, because every hundred episodes on this show, I try to play the best calls from the past 100 episodes. So I started doing that with episode 500, and then I did it again with 600, and now we're at 700. I've done 700 episodes of this stupid snowplow show. And the reason we do this is so that if a new listener comes along, we can just say, hey, new listener, if you want to hear the very best stuff out of the Snowplow show, I mean, really, it was the 500th episode was the idea. We could just send them to episode 500. But then when 600 rolled around, I'm like, let's just do another one. And I don't know if there's much point to it anymore. Wouldn't it be easier just to send all of the new listeners to episode 500? Because that's probably the best episode ever, because that covers many years instead of of just the past year but whatever I'm doing this anyway and I'm never very organized about this I don't create a list throughout the year maybe I should start doing that tomorrow now that I've just done episode 700 what I usually do is just go through my YouTube account which is at youtube.com slash phone losers of America that's the channel where I pretty much post the best of content and I try to figure out which of those calls is from the past year because sometimes I find old calls and I put those up and I get confused and I forget which ones are the new ones. So that could happen in this episode. I might play an old prank by accident, but I don't think so. I've already chosen a bunch of pranks. I've got about an hour and 50 minutes of them, which do I need to play that many? Does it need to be that long of an episode? The whole point is to attract new listeners, but do they really want to listen to two hours of this stuff? Probably not. Maybe I should just cut it down to about an hour. I think I struggle with this every hundredth episode, but I got these from YouTube. I got these from my own uh, directories on my computer and I skimmed through a lot of them to make sure they were good. So hopefully I'm correct about that. Hopefully none of these suck too bad. A few Few of them are kind of long, but I tried not to pick any that were more than 10 minutes long. There was some really good stuff that I wanted to include, but it was, you know, 15 minutes and 25 minutes and just crazy amounts of time. We don't want to do that, do we? We want to do mostly short pranks. So most of these pranks are hopefully, you know, around five minutes long. I think that's a good length of time for a prank but quite a few are going to be right around 10 minutes or a little bit under 10 minutes. So usually 100 episodes covers about one year because I'm supposed to do right around 100 episodes every single year. That's my own goal. I kind of fell short of that this year. As you all know, I've kind of sucked with my show schedule. So this one stretches from the very end of 2019 all the way until last week, which is when I did the last Snowplow show. So I'm a little bit behind. It should have just been a year. Instead, it's a year and four or five months. 
Oops, sorry about that everybody. I'm trying to get better. I just moved into a new studio and I'm hoping that will motivate me to really get going on shows again. I was feeling kind of burnt out at that last place I was in. I was there for 11 years. What the hell? What am I doing? Living in a place for 11 years. Who does that? It's the longest I've ever lived anywhere. So I'm in a new place, which I will hopefully leave in a couple of years and not stay here for 11 years. And at this point, I'm just rambling. What am I doing? Come on, let's play some calls. Let's start with the oldest ones that I found on the YouTube and in my computer lists. I did some mall Santa calls. Do I want to put both of these in there? Yeah, why not? They're both short. So here are some calls where I was calling up various stores inside of shopping malls, pretending to be the mall Santa. And 2019 was the last time I was really able to do that. Well, because of COVID-19 becoming a big deal just a few months later. So here are a couple of calls from Santa Claus made around the end of December in 2019. Back before all this craziness. Thanks for calling Barnes & Noble. This is Marty. Can I help you? Hey, Marty. This is Santa uh, downstairs, you know? Yeah. Doing the photos with the kids. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm going to be, we're, we're going to be uh, wheeling my throne up into your store here in a minute. And I'm, I'm just going to take my photos inside your store for the rest of the night. Really? Yeah. Is there enough Why? room up there? I could make room. Why? Oh, uh, we just don't, I don't know. It's just, it's like cramped down here. I'm feeling claustrophobic in oh, front of Macy's. Oh, you're kidding. No, no, I'm serious. It's just like, you know, change, uh, change the scenery and all that. There's this lady at Master Cuts is giving me crap, you know, and I don't know, just several reasons. But I'm, we're going to be coming up there. We're going to set up all the photography equipment and everything. I don't think so. No, I don't have room for that. Oh no, it's it's fine. I'm Santa Claus. You know, I'm, I'm the mall yeah. Santa. That's fine, but yeah, as a store, we're not allowed to have pictures being taken in here. Well, no, it, it's going to be like of my throne, and you know, we'll have yeah. the whole background and everything. No, they won't even see your store. I don't have anywhere for that. I don't have space for it. Yeah, we'll make space. I'll, I'll help no, you move I don't everything. Have space. No, I will help nope, you. Don't have space. Me and the don't elves and the photographer will help. We'll move everything. Don't have, don't have space. You're going to sell more books this way because I'll be in your store. Well, I'm sure. Like you've got the pole of Santa being in I your. I don't. I don't have anywhere to put you. No, we'll. we'll I, we we were up there earlier, and we we like it would be so easy. There's plenty of room. You just no, gotta we're scoot, good. You just gotta scoot some shelves together. That's all. No, we're good. Thank you. Well, no, I'm coming up there like in about ten minutes. I'm just we're gonna set up. Well, I'm telling um, you right now, if you come up here in ten minutes, I cannot have you set up in the store. No, we have to. And um, do you have like as far as electrical outlets go? Do you have any uh, 220 no. volt outlets? Nope, don't have anything like that in the store. Okay, well, well, we'll just hook up a couple of 110s and tie them together uh, from, you know, opposite yeah. ends of the store. I, I, no, not going to happen. No, I, I think it'll work. You know, we just got to make the connections right. Um, so so we got the the dual phase, you know, all working yeah. together. All right, have a good night. Ma'am, ma'am, like, I don't... Like. Claire's. Hey, Claire's. Yes. This is Santa here in the mall. Yes. You know, down downstairs? Mm-hmm. Hey, um, we, I, we're going to be coming up there in a minute with all our camera equipment. We're going to be taking one of my photos with one of the kids inside Claire's. Okay. Um, oh, you got to flip it. Yeah, towards the inside. Hold on one second. All right. Hello? Hi there. Uh, it's Santa here down here in the mall downstairs. Oh, can you enter your pen for me, please? Ho, Hi. ho, ho. Hi. Hi. Um, so what's I'm, going on? Oh, she didn't tell you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're going to be coming up there in just a minute with all of our camera equipment and one of the kids. Uh, she wants to get her photo taken inside Claire's. Okay. So we're going to. That's okay. It's going to be, be a massive amount of camera equipment. We need to, um, you know, plug in some things into the outlets and we're going to set up lights and everything so I can take this photo with this little girl. Um, we might not have room for all of that. We are kind of busy right now. Yeah, we're, we might end up knocking some shit, some stuff over, excuse me. Um, you know, because there's, there's going to be a lot of us. There's a whole camera crew and uh, the elves and stuff. We're just going to take a quick photo. It won't take that long. Okay, well, as long as it's, you know, like, doesn't get in the way, I'm fine with that. Okay, it's just that this little girl, she loves Claire's and everything. Sure, and yeah, Santa. of course. And um, she's sad that Claire's is going to be closing and going out of business forever. So she just wanted We're to get. We're not a... going out of business. 
Well, that, that's what she said. She's, she's no, like, no, well, we're not going out of business. Well, I, why would she make that up? She's six years old. I don't know why she would just make that up. I'm not sure. I don't know. But, um, well, hey, I do have another customer coming up. So, was there anything else? So, Claire's is definitely not going out of business? Nope. That's weird. I, I Okay. Well, I'm, I, I don't know what to tell her then. I mean, we're still going to come up and take the photo, but she might ask you about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, we're not closing. Oh, that, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear it. Y All right. You made it another well, year. Okay, well, hey, I do got to go, okay? Yeah, yeah, I hope you make it another right. year. You know, I hope... All right. I hope Have you make it, day. like, I hope you're still here Bye. next year. Hello, thank you for calling Claire's. Oh, hey, this is Santa again. Um, I had Hi. one more quick question, if that's okay. Okay, what's up? Oh, um, well, okay, so whenever we take photos, you know how people say, you know, to the kids, say cheese. You know, you know? Yeah. My head elf, instead of saying that, he makes them say, um, fuck bitches, get money. Okay, yeah, you can't do that here. I've got to go. Like I said, we're really busy. You have a good one. Thank you. Bye. All right, there's the mall Santa calls. I can't remember what year I started doing those. I know it was in 2019. It was probably the year before or maybe 2017. Those are a lot of fun, but COVID kind of ruins it a little bit. And by the time COVID's over, we're probably just not going to have malls anymore. I have one more Christmas themed call from December 30th, 2019. Every year after Christmas is over, I like to call up my landlord and let them know that I'm flushing my Christmas tree down the toilet because that's more environmentally friendly and it's a really long walk to the dumpster, but they never seem to see it my way. So here is that call. This is Shelly. How can I help you? Hey, Shelly. I'm a tenant here and um, I was trying to find out if they're... If, if um, I don't know, are the apartments have any plumbing issues? I, I, I'm, I'm having kind of a plumbing I'm, issue. I don't know if it was just me. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you tell me um, who you are, where you live? Oh, sure. I'm in apartment 12. Apartment 12. Yep. And what is your address? 1040 Street. Okay. Um, so I'm not aware of any issues over there. What's happening? Oh, it's just when I, I'm trying to flush the Christmas tree down the toilet. And, mm -hmm. um, the, like it was working at first, but now you're like, let me see if it's still doing it. I flush. Oh yeah, the water's, the water's coming up. It's going to go on the floor again. Okay. Here, yep, here so, it comes on the floor. A Christmas tree should not be flushed down the toilet. Yeah, well, no, I mean, um, we already started. We, I've got half of it down. Yeah, so you've probably blocked the line because it's not going to continue to go down. Well, no, I, it does not. I, I broke it up into smaller pieces. I don't care if you broke it up into smaller pieces. It's just like a vacuum. If you use a vacuum, it's going to clog the vacuum thing. It's not going to go down the toilet. Um, so at this point, stop putting it in the toilet okay. and take it out to the trash. Well, I mean, it's already in there. And I'll have to have maintenance come over and snake the line. Like when I, but when I, like, um, I don't know if it needs snaked exactly. Like, uh, I put some, some of that, uh, roto-rooter or what's it called? Liquid plumber down the, down the drain. Down liquid the plumber is not going to help. No. No, look, if, cause if I keep flushing, cause the water is blue, it's like liquid plumber. Like here, when I, when I flush... Oh, no, well, now the blue is going on the floor. Yeah. Stop flushing the toilet. Okay. He's going to need to come and snake it. You, you've blocked the line. A Christmas tree cannot go down plumbing. Well, no, we okay. did this last year, and it was fine. It went down just fine last year. Well, you shouldn't have. That's not good for any plumbing anywhere. Okay, um, but since it worked last so. year, it sounds like you're wrong. I mean, it, it can go down the toilet. Okay. Just well, I'm I might be wrong, but I beg to differ. This is cheap. Go down the toilet. Okay. Stop flushing the toilet if the water's coming out. Well, if I keep flushing, eventually it'll it'll just kind of the water will you know keep moving it down. Oh, it's going on the floor. Just went on the floor again. It went on the floor again. Yes. yes. Stop flushing the toilet. I will send maintenance over there, and they can sink the line. Okay. Okay. How long does that take? What does that even mean? I don't know where he's at right now. I know he was out um, 
towards Olathe on the on a job, so I'll give oh, okay. him a call and find out where he's at and um, get him over there as soon but as he can. Are, are you sure, like, okay. no, nobody else in the building's been having issues, like, with their I plumbing? I anybody else call. It, maybe it's know? not even my fault. Maybe it's, like, just a general issue with the plumbing. It could be a general issue with the plumbing, but... Definitely, it's getting clogged, and yes, the Christmas tree does not go down, okay? Yeah, well, it did last year. Oh, it's going it's, to the floor again. I don't care if it did last year. Just stop doing it right now, okay? Okay, all right. And I will get maintenance over there. But I, I can do the rest Dude. of it, right? Like, I, Or I can at least keep, no, keep trying? No, no, do not do the rest of it. Please, do not. Okay, because we usually, okay? we throw stuff, um, instead of using trash bags, we just rip stuff up and throw it down the toilet just to save on trash bags. Well, you're going to ruin the plumbing. No, it's just... Jonathan, that is ridiculous. Do not do that. It's, okay? It's, it's just basic stuff. You know, I mean, it's like paper and, you know, it's biodegradable paper stuff. Paper doesn't go in the toilet. Yeah, but we're not... We're not Trash putting, does not go in the toilet. We're, we're not okay? Put, we're, not put, we're not putting plastic bags down the toilet or anything. That's I don't care. Trash doesn't go in the toilet. Okay. All right. And a Christmas tree definitely does not go in the toilet. Okay, so stop flushing it down the toilet. Okay. I will get maintenance over there to take the line. Okay. Oh my gosh, stop flushing the toilet. I just wanted to see, like, is, is it, like, usually when it gets clogged up like this, um, if I just keep flushing, eventually it'll go down, and you don't even have to use a, uh, a plunger. Okay, let me... Let me hang up, and I'm going to call maintenance and get them over there. So please okay. stop flushing the toilet, okay? Flush the toilet? Don't. No. Stop flushing it. Okay. I'm going to hang up now and call maintenance, okay? Okay. Did you say don't stop? Please stop flushing the toilet. Oh, I thought you said don't stop. You're going to get charged for this call and for the maintenance call if you don't stop flushing the toilet. Well, no, I, I pay my phone bill to Verizon Wireless. No, the call for, the... for maintenance to come and fix oh, the, the plumbing. Oh, the call. I'm Jonathan, sorry. can you please just stop flushing it, okay? okay? I'm sorry. I just I misunderstood. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll have maintenance get over there, and John will give you a call, too. We do not flush Christmas trees down the toilet. Okay. F flush the Christmas tree? Okay. I'm hanging up. <laughs> See, they just never seem to appreciate it. I don't understand. There's this one guy on YouTube. He complains every single time I do a toilet flushing call. And I'm sure he's done it again already. Go ahead and complain, you big complainer. But I'm not going to stop doing toilet flushing calls. I love the toilet flushing calls. The landlords hate when you flush things down the toilet that aren't poop. And just despite that one guy that really hates the toilet flushing calls, I'm going to play another one. Or, I mean, it's not actually just to despite that guy. It's because it's one of the ones that I picked from the past year to play on today's show. This one is from July of 2020. So I'm skipping ahead a little bit to do yet another flushing the toilet call. But this one is about dandelions, flushing dandelions down the toilet. You wouldn't think they would mind if you flush dandelions down the toilet. Those are smaller than poop, right? And they're biodegradable. What's the problem? I don't see the problem. Hello? Hey, uh, Kevin? Yes? Hey, I'm one of your tenants over here on Court Street. Hi, how you doing? Oh, pretty good. Which um, one? Uh, this is Roy. Um, so, like, I, I replaced the carpet with dandelions, and I've been having a problem with the toilet. Wait, what was the first part of that? The carpet with dandelions. Like, it's just, it's like better for the, just, you know, the air inside the place and everything. It helps with the circulation. So I just put dandelions down. Um, I just planted them everywhere in, in soil, like in sod. But anyway, like, um, the, I've been flushing the dead ones down the toilet, and now the toilet won't flush. Hmm, probably wasn't a great idea then, was it? I, uh, I, I, I what unit are you in? Never had a problem with this before, but like it was flushing just fine. I think it's actually just the plumbing problem. I don't think it's my fault because like when I flush Which it, it's, unit are you in? Let me try. Oh no, it's it's going up on the floor. It's gonna come over. So yeah. pull the pull the open the lid and pull the thing up. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not a plumber. 
open the lid of the toilet and pull the chain uh, uh, up so it stops. Here, let me flush it. So it doesn't go over, in other words. Well, I'm flushing it, and, and now it's just going over again. Uh, I would stop flushing it. Okay. Well, it's just it, they're just dead dandelions. It seems like your toilet should be able to handle it. <laughs> well, it seems like it should. Which unit are you in? Um, it's the one on the corner. Is that is that number C or something? I don't know. Uh, there could be a C, Christopher. You're in with Jackie Bot, or you in the? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Oh, there it goes. It's overflowing again. uh, Can you stop flushing the toilet, maybe, so it doesn't overflow? Well, it seems like if I keep flushing, they'll probably go down eventually. Are you cleaning up the overflow so it doesn't go through the floor and get (laughs) the ceiling of the unit below? I've got dandelions. That's a problem. I've got dandelions all over the floor, like covering the surface of the entire place. So I think those kind of absorb. Please don't throw the dandelions in the toilet. Please, th- they're dead ones. It's not. They're not. Even, I don't care. They're please like, sh- don't throw the dandelions in the toilet, sir. They're shriveled please. up. They, they're like. They're very. They're not they, like typical sized. They're, they're, uh, okay. Please do not use the toilet. Do not throw anything in it. I'll get the plumber over there to deal with the clock, whatever you, that is. Use, but please don't make the situation work. Oh no, I wouldn't do. Did you say use the toilet? Hold on. Do not use the toilet. It's still doing the same thing. I don't know why you want me to do that again. Going on. I said, do not flush the toilet. Please don't use it. Okay, you were just cutting out a little bit there. It sounded like you said to. Oh my god! Do, oh, said, oh my gosh! Please this is use it. me up a wall. Do not, do not, don't. Please do not use the toilet. Well, I'm not peeing in it. I just. Well, don't try. use it. Don't. Period. Please don't let anybody flush the toilet again. I just until I get, get a plumber there. I was just trying to get the dad- you dandelions. You have two toilets. That... Please don't use it. I'm not allowed in I'll the other bathroom. I'll get a plumber there. Well, then, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Then you're going to have to go out to the public toilet out on the beach if you're not allowed in the other bathroom. Well, can I? Can you, you give me permission? You can't use that. Can you give me permission to go in the other bathroom so I can flush the dandelions down that one? No. Please do not flush dandelions down any of the toilets. They're dead dandelions. Throw them away. Throw them in the trash. Well, then that please. costs money for trash bags. That's not my problem. That's not your problem. Yeah, well, no, it Throw is my Throw them pr- in the trash. It is my please. problem. I, I don't want to have to spend extra money on trash bags. You're not spending any money on trash bags. There's trash bags underneath the sink in the kitchen. When you think about it, we all spend money on the trash bags. It's not just one person. Okay. Dude, do you want to stay there or do you not want to stay there? Because I want to you st- cannot do that. I want to stay. It just please. Seems, it seems like the toilet. I'm begging you, please do not throw anything in the toilet. Please. Okay, I'm not throwing anything new in the toilet. It's just that the stuff that's in there already is stopped up. That's fine. Leave it. Just don't use it. Please. Oh, my gosh. You just flushed it again? I didn't flush it. Why do I hear it? Because I did what you said. I pulled on the chain, and that just made it flush again. You you told me to... You need to leave the bathroom. Please go out of the bathroom. Just leave it. Please don't go in that bathroom again. The door's blocked. The door's blocked? Yeah. I, 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 I'm just beside myself right now. What is your name? Roy. Roy? Yep. And you're with Jackie? Yep. That's that's me and Jackie. We're inseparable. What's Jackie's last name? Uh... Oh, my God. That's, I don't... It still overflowed. I, I didn't flush it again. I was just pulling on the chain again. Who are you? 
I'm Jackie's friend. Roommate. Jackie who? The only Jackie that lives here is stupid. There's nobody that lives there. What are you talking about? There's nobody that lives here. I live here. Those are... Where'd you... What, what, what kind of false rumors is Connie spreading to you back there? Tell her to shut the fuck up. And that's where the call ends. You know what? I'm just going to only play toilet flushing calls for the rest of this episode. Forget all this other stuff I picked out. Toilet flushing calls are the best. No, I'm kidding. I won't do that. I've still got plenty more pranks to play here. I've got a couple of complainer calls next, starting with this one that I sort of remember. It's where a lady says that her life was threatened at a drive through I think maybe at a Wendy's or something, some fast food place. And then after that, we've got a grocery store complainer. So let's play both of those. They're both from January 15th, 2020. Hello. Oh, hello, Shannon. Yes. Hey, this is uh, Gary from the Wendy's corporate office. Uh huh. I, I understand you were having some sort of a problem with one of our locations. Yeah, the, but this was back at the beginning of December. Yeah, we're just now getting to it. Sorry about that. That sounds real nice when I was threatened and swore at and everything else. Okay, well, yeah, I'm calling you now, though. I mean, at least we called you eventually, right? Okay. And I'm sure nothing's been done about it. Well, we just, we don't know what, what the deal is exactly. Um, what, what happened? Um, well, I had stopped there, and not only was the line all the way for the drive through almost wrapped around the building, there was a line of about 10 people. No, it was your staff. Oh. You have Mexicans making sandwiches that don't understand English. You have people working the counter that are very rude. And then the one guy that threatened me said he was trying to help get people through the line faster. But what he was doing was bagging one order and then standing there and looking around like he had no clue he was even awake. Hmm. And then he would help again. And then the same thing happened again. He was probably just high. That, that sounds up. like Chad. I don't even remember what his name was. I'd have to go back and, and see... Was he a Mexican? What I told the people when I first called. Was he a Mexican? No. He was a tall black man. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like and Chad. It, no, I don't think that was his name. Well, you said you don't remember his name. Okay, well, isn't it in the initial report that I made? Uh, you know, I didn't feel like reading it because it was so long. Like, you're just like a really long-winded writer, I guess. Like, you just talk a lot. So I just, man, I, I just couldn't read it all. To be honest. No, I gave the report to the girl and she typed it up. Oh, okay. So she just made up all this extra stuff to make you seem long-winded? Um, no. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I didn't read it all. Uh, it just, it, to me, it sounded like Chad. I know we've had some problems with Chad there at that location. So were you just wanting, okay. like, were you just wanting like a free coupon or something? You know, like a 20% no. off? No. Oh, what, what is it that you're looking for? Like you want to I don't think that guy should be working there. When he was threatening my life, and you don't sound very concerned about it either. No, no, I'm concerned about it. I'm trying to help you out with this. No, you're not. You just called me long-winded and, and too breathy and told too long of a story. I'm sorry, but when I was standing in that restaurant, he threatened my life. Well, are you sure you weren't being and a motherfucker you don't seem first? To give a shit. Were, were you perhaps being a motherfucker toward him? Are you seriously talking to me like this? No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just, that, that's the best way I can think to put it. Like, maybe you were being a motherfucker and he was just throw, and what throwing... what is your name? Maybe he was just throwing it back at you. And what is your name? Uh, my name is Gary from the cor corporate office. Gary I'm, what? No, who? I'm a who. I'm a person. What is your last name? Gary who? No, who, who is my last name. It wouldn't be a what. Okay, what is your last name? Gary? Who? Who is my last name? Okay, I've asked you four different times. Yeah, but you're saying it wrong. What and who? No, no, you only said what is your last name, but my it would be a who. I don't believe you're even from Wendy's. Well, I don't believe that you're not not a motherfucker. How do you like who that? Who are you, and it, why are you calling me? And there you go. Like you got it right that time. Who are you, not what are you? 
No, I think you're just trying to get something. You're just trying to trying to scam us out of money or something. Is that is that what this is really all about? Are you seriously asking me that question when my life was threatened in that in that Wendy? Well, it seems like you probably um, you you manufactured the whole thing to make your life get threatened, just so you could get like oh free, yes, I'm sure I manufactured the whole thing. Free frosties or whatever. You're probably in cahoots with Chad, because this is exactly. I have the, no idea who Chad is, and I could care less to get anything free from that company. I think he should have been fired. Well, then then what are you complaining for? Why don't you just stop going there? Why are you calling me and talking to me like this? Well, you started it. Can you tell that kid in the background to shut the fuck up, please? You need to tell me what your name is. I already told you. It's Gary. And you would not be talking to me like this if you actually represented Wendy's Corporation. Well, no, no I was trying to, to work it out with you, and you just started being a motherfucker, so I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? I, let's just, we got off on the wrong foot. Let's start over. But, no, but, if somebody called me from Wendy's Corporation, they would tell me exactly what their name was, I and they they would have better told representation. You, I told that you what my name is several times. It's Gary. You didn't tell me your full name. It's Gary who? That's not true. It is too. I'm Asian. It's H U Gary H U. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. No, no, you're not. What do you mean I'm not Asian? I know what nationality I am. Can you tell that kid to shut the fuck up, though, for real? First of all, it's not a kid, and no, you're not going to speak to me like that. Is it a dog? It's none of your business. Okay, well, just tell, tell whatever it is to shut the fuck up. And, like, in the future, when you come to our restaurants, could you please not be such a motherfucker? That's all we ask. No, ma'am, I'm just kidding. I, I just saw your phone number on Twitter. I thought I'd call you and pretend I'm Wendy's. That's all. So really, you think you're a good person for doing that? Well, no, I never said I was a good person. I'm, I'm just saying. And for cussing at me and telling me to talk to my family like that? Well, you you were kind of you kind of had an attitude, so you're basically cussing at me with your attitude. Well, because I didn't know exactly who you were. You're a fucking piece of shit. N no, no, no. I'm actually a really nice person for real. No, you're not. No, no, I am for real. I and am. You need Go get fucked by your piece of shit boyfriend. Goodbye. What do you have a problem with my boyfriend? Hello. Hey, is this Kate? Yes, it is. Oh, hey, Kate. This is Grega from the the Harris Teeter. Yes. Uh, you were in here a while back, and I guess you're having some problems with your Vic card. No. Yeah, uh huh. No, we we saw right here. Um, I have a problem with my Vic card. Oh, I don't know. Like, um, the, 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 something about the checkout person and he was really annoyed and put off and didn't want to be there. Oh, that was, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, you were trying to get him fired or something. You're, you're trying to, like, just, just get someone fired just because you're bored, I guess. Who is this? Uh, this is Grega. I'm with, uh, Harris Teeter. Okay, and I wasn't getting anybody fired. Well, you were trying to, though. You were trying to, like, shame him and, and just, you know, trying to make us ride him up. And you're just, like, you're just being a busybody. But, no, I was just, they wanted me to call you up and just make sure that uh, everything had been resolved to your satisfaction. Um, can you hold on one second? Why? Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm just interested. I just wanted to keep talking. Oh, well, why do you have to go for a second? Are you going to fire up the recording device? No, I'm not going to fire get, up the recording device. I don't in, know who you are. Try and get me in trouble next. Ugh, people like you, I tell you. And you work with the Harris Teeter? Yeah, yeah. We just, we just want to make sure everything is okay because it's like I guess you're having some sort of an issue and... So, so everything's everything's all resolved and everything. That, that that's what they wanted me to just figure out for you. Well, it's funny because someone's already called me regarding this, and I was not trying to get anybody fired. Okay, well, this is just a follow up call. Just settle down, lady. Hey, fuck you, pal. I don't know who the fuck you think you are talking to my wife like that. Well, you know what? Your your wife I'm is. Being... Calm down, lady. Well, she's being what? kind of a bitch toward me. You know, like. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> 
What's your What's your name? With her attitude, I already told your wife my name is Grega. Grega? What kind of name is that? Um, it's a normal name. It's a very common name in the United States. Grega? Yeah, Grega. Grega? Yeah, Grega. I never. <laughs> well, and what's your last name there, Grega? Zerbel. Spell that one for me. But listen, why don't you just get the fuck off of the phone? This is between me and Kate. You know, just you go in the f- other room or something. Just, just go away. Get oh, lost. Go anywhere. If you got a fucking problem with me, I'll give you my address. You can come here right now and we'll settle this shit. Uh, no, that's okay. I don't really want to hang out with you. You sound like somebody I don't really want to hang out with. Uh, you damn sure don't. Yeah, because, I mean, you just sound really kind of lame. And... So you're with Harris Peter? What? So you're with Harris Peter? Yeah, yeah. What's the problem with that? <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm having a hard time believing that, that they would employ someone who's such a dick. Well, I have a hard time believing that you, you like your your wife just goes around trying to get people fired all the time. She doesn't, but when people don't do their job, people are allowed to complain. Yeah, yeah. See, she's just trying to trying to get them written up and fired, and that, that's I don't that's think what trying to do that. That's what it's makes funny, but that's what I, I makes her here. day. I, you want to let me talk here, bud? Well, no, your cell phone I, was cutting out a whole bunch, and that's why I was interrupting because I couldn't hear you. What? Okay. What's that? Very well. Uh, it's funny because the week before I called and complimented how good uh, the service that I got was. Oh, bullshit. You didn't do that. Okay. Well, it's been a great conversation with you. I hope you have a great day. Today. Okay. Hey, hey, sir. I was going to tell him I loved him. I don't think I ever noticed on that one before, but she said she wasn't going to fire up the recording equipment, but then I heard her hit a couple of touch tones, which was probably her using her Google whatever thing to record my call. So that lady was just a big liar, and probably that call is somewhere out there, you know, on the internet with her freaking out, telling everyone about her horrible customer service experience. I really should keep an eye on these Twitter accounts after I call them and see what they post, because that would be fun to hear her side of that story. But unfortunately, I have no idea who that was, who either of the people on those calls were. So I guess that's not going to happen. And I haven't done those in a while now. I need to get on Twitter and find some more complainers to talk to. Next, we're going to hear a couple of number change calls. I've got two of them here. The first one, I hope this is a good one. I didn't listen to this one yet, but I remember it being really bizarre, and it's kind of long. So if this one kind of sucks, I'll probably just delete it out of the show, and you'll never hear me talking about it. So I'm going to shut up so I can listen to this call and see if it's any good. This one is from March 25th, 2020. Hello, Greg. Hello, Greg. This is uh, Roy from from AT&T. I'm... Calling about your account. We we changed your number today, the 608 number. You're calling from AT&T? Yes, your carrier, your cell Ch- carrier. We are changing your number today. I just wanted to give you your new phone number. This this five... Uh, a, you, this five a, you what? A, a, you can't do that. And B, you're not AT&T, and well, you're not my carrier. I absolutely am, too, AT&T. Ch- you were originally with AT&T. I know you ported to somebody else, but originally oh, okay. you're with AT&T. I'm not stupid, sir, uh-huh. but we know that you're not, okay. you're not well, we local to 608 I'm anymore. Your... What? I said, I know you're not stupid. I was saying that you weren't because I thought you were a spammer. Oh. Okay, not because you're not because you're stupid. Well, you Anytime shouldn't... somebody calls me up and says, I am your carrier and you're not my carrier, then I start suspecting that you're a spammer. So I see. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I'm not a spammer. I'm just calling to give you a new phone number. You have a new phone number. This five one no longer works for you. Uh, how can you do that? Uh, I, the... That phone number is in 4,000 places. It's in publications. It's in books. Uh, you, you, uh, if you cut that number off, uh, are you going to forward all the calls that go to that number forever to my phone? Oh, no. We're going to assign it to somebody else. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. But anyway, um, you know, since not you're, o- it's you're not, not okay. It, 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 it's not okay. Um, yeah, but you're not, the, you're not uh, local to the 608 area code anymore. It doesn't matter. Nobody, no, nobody is local. We, there is, everybody in the world is in a different place than they were when they were when they got their first phone. 
and they all have their... Okay, do you write philosophy books? Is that what this is? No, I'm not saying it's a philosophy book. You're trying to be all deep with me? No, I'm not. I'm saying that you're going to have to you're going to have to change the phone number of almost everybody in the United States who's an adult. Okay, well, we're starting with you. We've changed your number. Uh, we've given you a two four zero area code. If you want to change that to maybe a three zero one or something, that's fine too. No, I'm sorry. Do not change my number. I, I you do not have permission to just arbitrarily change my number. I have never seen anything about this. Do not change my number until I have a chance to lodge an official protest. Oh no, because no. there is absolutely it's 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 pretty much it's basically done. Like I'm in the middle of changing it on your account right now. I just gotta. Well, stop the sequence. changing it on my account. Stop changing it on my account because I'm going to be filing a class action suit. And no. so you don't want to do that. No. You don't want to do that. Yes. No. I am. There is no way there is no way that I can go to all the places that have my phone number and change it. Well you should have thought about that before you depended on a phone number. Maybe you give people your what you email. What do you mean? Wait, 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 wait. I should have thought about it before I depended on a phone number. What does depended on a phone number mean? Well, why don't you just give out your email address or your, you know, Twitter handle or something? How can I give out my, how can I give my, how can I give my email address out to people to call me? You figure how it out, smart guy. With... Oh, I'm going to, what do you mean I figured out smart guy? Well, it just seems like you're, you've been giving me shit on this entire call from the very beginning for no reason at all. You're just looking for no. something to complain oh. about. No, no. I, I just... Hold on. Stop, stop. I already explained to you that you called up and introduced me as being from my carrier. So I thought you were a spammer because you are not my carrier. Yeah, I was You were my carrier many years ago. Yeah, yeah, you okay, fired you us. So that. What, what do we give and a shit? That, like, what, you, you, you fired us as a carrier. I hope you hope... Yes, but you said, hi, I'm AT&T. I am your carrier. And you aren't now. So I thought you were a spammer. And so that's why I reacted the way I did. And then yeah. I explained that to you. And I stopped giving you abuse as soon as I, you said, oh, you were the carrier originally. And I said, oh, okay. Now I understand. All right. So we're okay on that front. But you can't just change my phone number because I have absolutely no way of contacting the gazillions of people who have that phone number, and that's my doctors, my medical, I have a cardiac condition, this is the emergency number, this is the way all these people are supposed to get hold of me, and you're going to change it to some number that nobody in the world knows, and they don't know that this is no longer my number. We'll just give it to the important okay? people. You don't have to give it to I all can, one I gazillion can't of them. It to them. I, can't, I can't give it to the important people. I don't know who they all are. I don't know all the people. I filed it on, on, on legal forms. I fill it out for the, for the uh, I mean, there's all sorts of forms that I filled out that that's the, le my, the legal, that's my contact number. Can't you just tweet? And Can't you just tweet? And, and just tweet how can it, I tweet? Tw tweet out your new phone number. Oh, Say, hey, everyone, this is my new phone number. My doctor, you think my doctor is on my tweet, my Twitter? I don't, almost I don't nobody know. Nobody that I know. It's on my Twitter. You can't tweet it. Well, out. come on. You like I think you don't have a gazillion doctors. So how just... many? How many? How many? How many? Well, I've got about six. Seven, okay, but that's not the only thing. That's, that's like closer. That's closer me, to zero than a gazillion. Let me. No, no, no. I didn't say I had a gazillion doctors. I said I have a gazillion people who have my number. So, how many? People, have you just called up and told them that you've canceled their phone number? That their phone number? Oh, is quite no a few. Quite, like a, a lot, actually. They usually get um, about as pissed as you are right now. Um, yeah. But I mean, you don't even live in in Wisconsin anymore. So what do you need nobody, a Wisconsin number nobody, for? Nobody, nobody lives there. What? You're gonna change my son's. Lots of people gonna, live in Wisconsin. No, no, nobody lives in very, uh, a very large percentage of the population does not live in the same area code where they oh, live oh. when they got their first Here we go again. If a tree falls in the forest, something like that, I don't know, I, weird philosophy types. This is not a philosophy. Okay, this look. Statistics. Grega. What percentage? Grega. How Grega. Many, how many? Listen, Grega. 
Greg. What's Greg, I mean. Greg. Well, you have two G's. Yeah, that's how you spell Greg. No, but it's, that's a, it's, it's pronounced ahead. Grega. Um, you were right. It is not pronounced Grega. It is not pronounced. What did you decide it? Is that G R E G G was pronounced Grega? Why would there be the extra G on there if it wasn't Grega? Because, because, so that you know that it's not a, a shortening a nickname for Gregory. Doesn't Gregory have two G's? No. Oh, I didn't know Wait, that. Well, it has. It, it was G R E G O R Y. I think people can spell it however they want. I mean, you know, people name their kids Hitler and stuff. <laughs> let's 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 move off of that topic. Okay, Greg, um, please. You were please. you were right in the beginning. I'm a scammer. I'm not with your carrier. I didn't change your number. I was going to try and get your credit card information. So congratulations, your number's not 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 changing. You're welcome. <clears throat> You're welcome. Say thank you. I'm a scammer. That's all. I'm just a uh, scammer. Uh, so how are we going to get my credit card information? I, I you know, you at this point, you threw me so far off base, I don't even remember. I, I just, I've forgotten how to scam. I think I'm going to do something else with my life from now on. Thank you. Thank you for that, Grega. Okay. So, so that's it. That's the end. I'm not changing your, your phone number to Maryland. All it was, right. It was just a joke. I was just joshing with you. Okay. I'm sorry. What, are, do you see the humor in it, though, now? Say hey, what? Do you see the humor in it now? Like, <clears throat> now that time's passed. Okay. Uh, well, no, except that I was in the middle of another call that you disturbed with all that, so... Who was it a call to? Who were you talking to? Uh, another of my uh, colleagues were designing a system for people with disabilities. And, oh, that didn't and sound that important. To get back to that. Yeah, you can tell them about this okay. crazy call you got now, and it'll, it'll lighten the mood. All right, bye-bye. You get to tell a lot of people about this, and it'll be funny, and it'll start conversations. Can you just thank me for for, you know, not changing your number at least? What did you say? Can you thank me for not changing your phone number? <laughs> thank you for giving me grief for 10 minutes. It was kind of funny though, wasn't it? No, it was not very funny. Well, you'll, you'll see the humor in it in a couple days, I bet. Bye-bye. No. You will, and you'll tell people about it, and you guys will have a good laugh, and you're welcome for that. You haven't said thank you once in this whole call. I, because I'm waiting for you to do something to uh, that I would thank you for. I gave you a fun story to tell. You're welcome. Say thank you. Okay. Say, okay. Th say thank bye you. Bye. Say thank you. Thank you. How's that? Oh man, thank you, thank you. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> bye bye. All right, bye, Grega. Thank you for calling. Anytime Fitness. This is Teresa. How can I help you? Hey, Teresa. Is this the manager? I am one of them. What can I okay, help you with? Okay, great. This is Carol. I'm with uh, AT&T, the phone company. We're, we're changing your number today. We're halfway through the process right now. We're going to swap your number with uh, Sensei Doug over at the karate store. Why? Um, well, I've got him on the line. He just he wants to swap numbers with you. So you'll have his number, and he'll have your number. Okay, that's hey. not going to work out at well at all because we have um, a multitude of people that we message every day that we've been using this number for many years, and if they call that number and they're calling over to a karate studio and they're not getting their gym, when they've received a message that says two zero on the end of it, that is going to create serious implications for our gym. Well, well uh, Sensei Doug, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here, ma'am. Um, 
No, uh, you, you you can just tell everyone your new number. We'll just have different numbers from now on. See, I can't I can't allow that because my owner isn't here, and we can't just switch numbers because you want to. Yeah. Um, like I said, we've had this business here for over 14 years, and we've had this number for for just as long as we've had this club, and I can't just change the number just like that. We have the number printed on our business cards with all the people that work here on our window, yeah, sent but, out in emails and text messages. There is no but. But I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell everyone your new number, you know, if they call me and then you, I'm you sorry, can... i I can't just let you do that. You I'm do not the owner. I cannot just give you permission to go ahead and change our phone number. It's not going to work. You can do the same for me. Uh, you know, just... I would definitely do that, and I understand what you're saying, but you're under, what you don't understand is I've got a multitude of people, like over thousands of people that have this number, and it is on our website, it is on our door, it is on our business cards. Yeah, that's, it is, you, we can't just not have this number. Well, yeah, but it doesn't it, work that it's way. like you'll still have it, because it'll, be it'll be ringing over here, and I can send people to you, and it'll increase business for both of us. Uh, it doesn't really work that way here. Yeah, it does. I mean, you know, it really doesn't. We have we have ways of reaching out to our members, like I said, on our social media, well, you said, on our diligence of communicating with our members. We, you know, we've got people calling us all the time. We can't just change the number. Yep. This doesn't work. Well, you said you're not the owner. You're Who's this have again? To pick a different number. Who, this, this is one of the managers. What, this is what? Teresa. Oh, hey, Teresa. It's Sensei Doug. It's just, it's, I know who you are. I've met you. But the thing is, is I, you know, out of respect, I can't just change our phone number. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so so should I not do this? Uh, I just needed to no, get your permission. No, you cannot. No, you do not have my yes, permission. Yes, yes, it's okay. Go ahead and do it. No. Oh, okay, you can. No, Wait. no. I'm sorry. Which of you was that? I'm getting confused. No, yes, we are not yes. switching the number. Go ahead and do it. It's fine. I, I think it's no, a good idea. This is Teresa. No, absolutely not. Now, I don't know no. who that lady is. <laughs> this, th- Sensei, stop. It's not going to work. <laughs> no, we cannot do that. I'm sorry. I can't. Okay, I can't well, comply with that. We're going to have to give him a different number. Well, that. Well, Teresa, I'm, I'm confused because one minute you were saying no and then you were saying yes. No, I wasn't. That was Sensei. We're not changing the number. No, that was Sensei right there impersonating me. It's actually fine. Go ahead. And- that is enough. No, we are not changing this number. I'm it's so- not going to happen. No. I'm sorry. No. I'm-, I'm sorry. I'm so indecisive. I'm on my period. Oh my God! You did not just do that. No, the lady from AT and T. We're not switching our phone number. Okay, but I'm happy. Anytime friend. Fitness is keeping the three girl. We are keeping that phone number. Keep, we're keep, not changing it. Keeping it at the karate store. No, we're not. I'm so confused right now. I don't know who to believe at this point. D- think- There's no changes to be made. There's nothing confusing. There's nothing to change. So I, I shouldn't hit the spot. So I should no, hit- do not hit submit. We're not changing our phone number so that the karate studio can have our number. It's not going to happen. But ma'am, they would have your number too. I mean, you would have their I number. I don't want their number. I want our number, and our number is going to stay the same. There isn't any changes that's going to be made, and I don't want to discuss this anymore. Carol, can you just do it? She's being a total bitch. No. I know she really is. This has got to be a joke. This is ridiculous. No, ma'am, I don't joke. I'm a Christian. My name's Carol. I'm a Christian, too, but you know what? This is not funny. Oh, no, we're not trying to be funny. He just wants to swap numbers with you. But you were saying yes a minute ago. No, I was not. I would never. I, so I no, heard, you're I not heard, making any changes to Anytime Fitness's phone number. It's not going to happen. I heard you say yes, and then you said I no, and then you said I have to go back to work. This is not going to happen. No changes. Do you hear me? Ma'am, don't yell at me. Don't be a bitch. Listen. I don't know how many times I have to tell the both of you that we are not changing our phone number. It is not going to happen, and I'm done with this conversation. What if we just try it out for two weeks? No, are you kidding me? That's going to impact my business, and I'm not having it. But they're not going to charge us for it. I don't like care it, it's, if it's they free. charge me or if they charge you. This is not going to happen. What, what if I, I'm not doing it. What if, no. What if, and if you want to discuss it further, Sensei, you can come over and talk to Tim when he's here tomorrow morning. What, what if I give you one of my cordless phone handsets and you can answer it's it sometimes? It's not going to happen. No. You can no, answer it sometimes no, no, if I don't no, answer it first. No. 
No. Yes, it's okay. Go ahead and do it. No. 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 So you can call or you can come over and you can talk to Tim tomorrow morning. And I'll let him know that you guys are trying to change his number and you can deal with him. He'll probably be fine with it because he's, he's reasonable. Yeah, because totally. Because he, why would he change his number? Why wouldn't he change his number? I mean, yeah, it's all over I mean, social he, media and all over everybody's business cards. And, you know, a, we've sent out like a hundred, over a hundred emails and text messages and phone calls with that number on it. Yeah, but well, I'll, I'll be right here. That. I'll be right here. You know, like you guys it can just come matter over. How close you I'll, are, it's I'll, not going to happen. I'll take messages for you. No, I don't got time for that. Well, no, it would save you time because I'd be taking messages. You have no idea what to say to these people. Yes, I do. No. I'm not an idiot. I can. I look. You don't know our pricing. You don't know our regulations. You can't tell them anything. You can't w- respond. To messages from our members, you can't. So it's not going to happen. This isn't as easy as just switching a phone number. There's a lot that goes through our business that you guys cannot be interfering with. Yeah, but I'll, I'll just so, just so leave I, things the way they are, please. So I, I should I should not hit this button then. This button no. right here that I have my finger on. <sighs> For crying out loud! Nothing's changing. Everything is staying the same. Oh, 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 that was a close one. I almost hit it. Well, thank God you didn't. I have to go back to work now. All right. Uh, thank you for thank participating you. in our prank call, ma'am. Oh, you're very welcome. Bye-bye. I love how frustrated Teresa got on that one. That was great. And that one happened back in February of 2020. And I wrote down Teresa's number because I've always wanted to call her back you know, maybe a year later, and just ask her what she thought of the prank call. You know, did it enhance her life? Did it give her stories to tell, like I told Greg the Philosopher? Did it completely ruin her life? And I just now tried to call her, and she wasn't at work today, but her co-worker McKenna says she's going to be in at 9 tomorrow morning, or actually 8, but she has a class from 8 to 9, so from 9 until 1, she'll be available. I've written this down, and I plan to call her up tomorrow. I've always wanted to call her up and see what she thinks of the prank call. So hopefully that'll happen on a show soon. I've got one other lady on this list too to call back a year later, which was in that same month. So maybe I'll just call them both back tomorrow, see what they thought of my prank call a year later. And speaking of people I would really like to call back, I'm going to play the kitty creeper lady next. This one happened in October of 2020. And this is another really long one. It's a, let's see, how long is this? Looks like it's just over 10 minutes, but this is a bizarre one, and I can't believe I didn't write this lady's number down, because she would have been perfect to call back. In fact, it looks like I just got that idea in February, and then I completely forgot about it. I thought I had more numbers on here. I need to start doing that again, writing down the numbers of people to call back a year later, just to see what they thought of my prank call, now that they've calmed down a little bit. Anyway, here is a 10-minute call to a really bizarre lady. Hello. Hi, Terry. Who's calling? Uh, it's your neighbor, Grega. I'm here on Circle 2, you know, the Blue House? The Blue House? Yeah, it's on your side of the street, but like quite a ways down. Oh, you were just out in the driveway with a tarp? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, how can I help you? Hey, um, can you please stop coming over to our house late at night and acting like you're digging graves in the backyard? Because it's a little weird and it's freaking my kids out and my wife and digging graves in your backyard well i guess you're what? pretending like you, you had that strobe light out there like it's lightning and you and i guess your husband were out there digging graves i'm not married like, well I, whoever it is just can you please not do that i don't even have a oh i think you've got the wrong neighbor oh no I, it's, we're sure it's you like i don't have see. a strobe light well, maybe it was really li- maybe it was really lightning. I don't know, but you were out there digging graves, like or, digging or, graves. I guess just trying to be spooky for Halloween. It's it's a good stunt. What? Like I thought it was. I don't have any graves. No, the people I, across the street from me have graves. I haven't been digging anything in my yard. Oh no, in my yard. You keep coming in our backyard. Your yard. And, yeah, you keep. I'm com- not in your yard. No, you're digging graves back there. And, like I guess just as a prank or whatever. And like I think it's Are you pranking me? No, and I think it's funny. You know, it it's a good one. I'm not in your backyard. It's freaking my kids out, you know. I didn't even know you had I don't Who are you talking about? Not my kids, but you know, the 
the kids. Who are you talking about? I'm not in anybody's backyard. I walk my dog at night, and I stay on the sidewalk. Yeah, your dog was back there, too. We saw your dog back there. You were just... I, I get it. You're just being silly. What you're, time you're, at night was I back there? Well, you're there a few nights, but I get that you're just in the, spi- the spirit of Halloween. And I'm not digging anything. I'm not even into Halloween. I don't even trick or treat. I don't even give out candy well, the, why, except to a few kids I know. I don't decorate hmm. for Halloween. I don't. I think you have the wrong person. Well, if you, if you don't do I any, really do. If you don't do any of that stuff, why are you doing this weird grave digging thing in our backyard? I'm not. I, just, I don't. Are you the house that had the big tomato growing drainage stuff that bothered the people behind you? Have I got the right person here? Yeah, that's us. That's so, you. I have not been in your backyard. Did you see that back there when, <laughs> when you were digging the grave? No, your wife was was uh, gave me some tomatoes once. I think before she married you, oh. and then I know that you were causing a problem with the city of and the people behind you with that big irrigation system you had going that's the only reason i know about that but you are completely off base if, oh. if you're saying that's me in your backyard dude yeah. i haven't been in your backyard yeah but we Why recognized the hell would you. i go back there we re- even my we we both recognized you like, with like with a shovel you're saying with a shovel yeah but like i guess okay, you weren't so really I think digging I think you're just- you're being silly. I think the next time this happens that you need to call the police because it's not me. Oh, so feel free no, to do that. Oh, no, come on. For a silly Halloween prank, I'm not going to call the police. It's I'm all not, in good no, fun. No, I think you should because I'm not doing it. But Now, there is a guy that crawls around here with a cat, and he goes up and down the sides of the yards. Crawls around your yard with a cat? Oh, he goes up. He's been for years been going up and down the side yards and the behind yards, and I had to get a no trespass order against him. Just for fun? No, he doesn't do it for fun. He looks in people's windows. Oh, but he crawls around and he has a cat? Yeah. Oh, the cat's like as, as an excuse. The cat. The cat's an excuse. I don't know. Maybe That's you're a, seeing him. Great but idea. I, I'm, I'm telling I you, I don't, I, don't even walk with, I don't even walk with a flashlight anymore, which I used to walk with a flashlight, which you think would be sensible. But I don't even walk with a flashlight anymore because, because people get upset if you walk with a flashlight, even on the sidewalk. What, pointing it on the sidewalk? They get upset. Why do they get upset? Pointing it on the sidewalk. I don't know. Oh, I wouldn't get upset about that. I just get upset when you go in my backyard I, and pretend to dig I'm graves. I'm not in That's, your backyard. I swear to God I'm not in your backyard, and I'm not digging. Uh, You're like, Terry. somebody's with a shovel? Somebody's with a shovel back there? Yeah, and, and a fake pile of dirt, I guess. They were, they were like just trying to freak us out, you know, digging fake graves. Are you sure it's not Chris? Chris would not do this. Doing something for the kids? No. It is not me. I, I swear to God, call the police. No, I'm not going to call time the police. Next time it happens. Poli- no, I'm rid- telling you, call the police because it's, it's not me. I'm not going to ruin someone's hilarious Halloween prank. It's, it's not you, a prank. Why would I? Look. Oh, oh so just, now, like, now you're admitting I, that it's just, you and it's not no, a prank. It's, it's not me. I oh. just like this neighborhood so much. So I'm fixing up my house to move. Why would I prank anybody? I've never pranked anybody. Wait, you like the neighborhood so much, but you're moving? I dislike the neighborhood so oh, much. Oh, you're disliking. Okay. You know what? You should just I, carry, Why would I prank anybody? You should just carry that flashlight around and fuck all those neighbors. Just shine your flashlight around. I would in like to, but the lady who lives next to Chris came out one time and yelled at me because I was wearing a flash, because I was carrying a flashlight. Oh, I'd shine it in her face and say, fuck you, lady. <sighs> Not her, you want it. That might be who's out creeping <laughs> because she's friends with Kitty Creeper. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, it's not me. Call, call the police. I swear to God, no. call the police. It's no. not me. I'm not pranking you. I, I can't I'm call not the police. Pranking I have you. three strikes. I'm not allowed to talk. I, 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 can't, I can't deal with the police again. Not, not since the incident. What incident? I, can't, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, you're joking with me. Somebody is joking with oh, me no, here. No, I'm not kidding, this ma'am. Is, I just... This I, is <laughs> I would not this kid. is a joke. Ma'am. This is a joke. Ma'am. Somebody is messing with me here. A, Somebody is pranking with me. I am a this Christian. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I do not joke. But I, I understand. Somebody is, somebody is pulling my leg here. I don't know who. But, I, you know, I, 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 I don't. <laughs> this is a joke. No, don't, don't be silly. Come on. 
No, call the police. Um, call the no. police next time it happens. I'm, I'm going to be walking my dog down the sidewalk to use the bathroom, and I'm not digging, and I'm not carrying a shovel, and I think you should call the police next time uh, it happens. You see somebody no. in your backyard they were just, digging graves or they, whatever the hell. I don't, I don't think, think they were. They weren't real there. graves. They were just. It was just, they were just setting a scene, you know. They're just. I don't care freaking, enough about any, like, really anybody on this street enough to play a prank on them. Even other me. Than, not even wow. you, no. Wow. Okay. So I, right. I think you're playing a prank on me. I'm not. So, but. <laughs> but really, seriously, if anybody's digging graves late at night in your backyard with a shovel, it's then you, you need to call the police. It's Halloween. I. I'm it's not, not even my. I don't even really don't get wanna, in that much to Halloween. I don't so, want to be that neighbor. Um, I'm not into it either. But I. I appreciate you should be a good that joke. neighbor. You should. You should be that neighbor. It's like really. You, you should, know. You know. In Christmas, they Christmas carolers come around, and I guess in Halloween. We they, don't have Christmas carolers here. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay, okay I gotta I'm go. hanging up now. Okay, I'm hanging up hey, now. Hey, I'm gonna go. Call next time it happens to you. Call the police. All right. Okay. All right. Listen. All right. Listen. Thanks. Yeah. Ma'am. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to properly say goodbye. Kitty creeper away. Okay. All right. Bye. Hold on, I've got a call coming in. Wait, is it her? Is it her? Hello? Yeah, I just wanted to call you back. I thought I'd come out and talk to you on the sidewalk. Oh. Uh, so we could talk about that. What? No, like why? What do you got planned for me? Nothing. I just thought that, that if, if that was really you, that you, would, that you who, could just come out and talk to me on the sidewalk. Who's, who's out in the background talking? It's called a witness. A witness? What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, you know your number showed up. Well, of you, course. I just picked you know, it up and said it and picked it up and said hello. You know I can find out who that is. How? How would you it's find really that? Easy. Out? How? How would you do it? <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a ton of ways. It took me about 15 minutes one time to find a lady in Australia, so it's not going to be that hard to find you. There's a ton of ways, but you can't tell me just one. No. Uh-uh. Like name the the top. The yeah, top I don't know what technique. you thought you were doing by calling me. Oh, I can I don't tell you. Know I'll what tell you. you thought hey, you were doing. Hey, hey, I'll tell you exactly what I was hey. doing. You want to hear what I was doing? What were you doing? I was yes, play- I do. I was playing a silly Halloween prank on my neighbor, and I got you. Ha ha ha! And you'll never know who it is. But it's not you. What do you mean it's not oh, me? Oh, I will. Yeah, I'll know who it is. Oh, you'll never know who it is. You'll never figure it out. Your phone number was there, you idiot. I ain't no idiot. Don't call me an idiot, lady. <laughs> yeah, you are. Why are you calling me an idiot? I thought we were friends before. You're being all nice to me on the phone and laughing. You're not. You're not. Now you're no, threatening you're not. me. Who's that? You're not. That's not you. Just because I didn't give you a damn tomato, you're, you're not going to like me? That's not you. No, I know. I didn't well, give you a, I no, didn't give you a tomato. No, it's not you. Uh-uh. No, you didn't have any tomatoes. I know. I don't have. I you don't, don't have eat. a drainage thing in your backyard. I don't eat tomato. Oh yes, I do. But I don't have tomatoes in my backyard. And what's the name of the neighbors you got in a fight with back there then? What? No, I just said I'm not that person. I, I said I was playing a Halloween prank on you. It's just a Halloween prank. You're taking it too seriously. This is like that time that you. Why are you, you were, picking me? Because it, it's just random. Like what time? Th- this is like that time that like I time? Th- that you were digging those graves in my backyard, and I'm just like, oh, that's a funny Halloween prank. You got me. Oh yeah, we can do some funny Halloween pranks. Yes, we can. Okay. All right, I'll so, find you. So you admit that it was you in my backyard digging those graves? Yeah, I don't know what you're up to. I'm making prank calls, man. But Settle you down. Probably, You're taking this probably weight. ought to stop it. Okay. All right. The last person who did something like this to me several years ago bought me a very expensive toy. What toy? Was it, was it a flashlight? No, it costs a lot more than that. Oh, okay. So keep it up. Keep it yeah. up. I don't think you're going to do keep anything because you're afraid of some lady that tells you not to use a flashlight and you're just like, okay, won't use the flashlight anymore, whatever. Mm. You need to tell that lady, fuck you. You need to use your flashlight. She can't tell you not to be safe. No, I don't get in fights with people and tell them fuck you. Okay, well, don't say fuck you. Just keep using, do your, keep using your flashlight. It's silly not to use your flashlight. It's a safety thing. I dare you to yeah. use your flashlight. Who cares what she thinks? Don't. Yeah, you need to not call me anymore, psycho. Oh, you just called me. So, you know, I just called you yeah. once, and now you're calling me back, and you're telling me not to call you. You should have you never, never called me the first time. Why not? 
I just wanted to see if the phone was legit because we're not friends and we don't know each other. I know, but the the prank call was funny. I mean, you you really reacted, so it was a successful prank call. Oh, I thought it was a friend of mine who was joking me, but now I know it's not a friend yeah. of mine that's joking me. Yeah, it's a complete. So somebody I need to find out who it is. It's a complete. So I know by now that stranger. your phone's coming from Greenwood. Yeah. Oh shit! Your you phone's know coming that I'm from, from Greenwood. Greenwood. Now what do I do? How, oh, I don't know. How'd you figure out that information? Well, I'll find you. How could you not figure out that information? I'm just being sarcastic. But you're going to harass people. I'm not harassing you. you're going to harass people. Yeah, you are. How? I'm telling you, you are. Well, no, I'm I just, telling you, you are. Harassment I'm is telling re- you repeated you are. contact. I'm just calling you once, and you called me the so second time. So you've done time. that before, huh? Yeah. No, it can be just once. It can be just once. Oh, no, I'm very, I'm very familiar with the, the definition of harassment. Ma'am. I'll bet you are. Oh, I'll bet you are. After all those restraining I'll orders. I'll bet you are. <laughs> anyway, you're okay. taking this prank way too seriously. Have a nice night. I'll find you. Oh no, you won't. Oh shit, I got a, a call coming in from anonymous. Let's see who this is. Satan residence. Hello. Hello. I'm looking for Todd. Ah, uh, Todd. I don't know a Todd. You've reached the Satan residence. Uh, Wait for Todd Ward. Oh, no, I don't know Todd Ward. This is Beelzebub. Ah, uh, I told you I'd find you. I'll call your boss Monday, then Beelzebub. Oh, shit. How do you know who my boss is? Who's my boss? Fuck. How, how are you calling from an anonymous number? This is crazy. Shit. Shit, shit. Told you I'd find you. I'm so scared. Man, that lady got me good. Called me back at the number I called from. Totally knew what my for real name was. I don't think she ever called me back after that, though. So hopefully Todd Ward is okay. So I've got more calls to people that live in homes and, you know, I do weird things about yards and all that stuff. Let's play a few of those, starting with this one in March of 2020, where this fucking guy is still using an incandescent toaster like it's the damn 1950s. Hello? Hi, Jeanette. Yes. Hey there, it's Steve Dave with the city of... Uh, yes. Um, we were driving by your house yesterday, you know, in the vans. We were scanning in the inside of your house. And we noticed um, you're still operating an incandescent toaster in there. I don't have a toaster. Well, you have something that's like an incandescent toaster. So, so whatever it is, you're going to have to replace that? Do you have a toaster oven, maybe? That's in- no. How do you not have a toaster? Like, how do you make toast? I don't eat bread. Oh, that's f- I don't eat grain. That's fucking so weird. I don't eat grain. That's fucking weird. I don't have one. Wow, okay. No, it's not weird. It's paleo. Well, it's a little fucking weird, and, and in my opinion. And what were you doing scanning my house? Uh, they just they drive by around and they they just drive around in the vans and scan everybody's house and make sure that there's no violations occurring inside, like you know using CFL bulbs or anything like that. Maybe they marked you down incorrectly. Maybe do you have CFL bulbs in there? No. Huh. Well, we'll we'll have to um do an a, a rescan. Um, you know, like in the next couple I weeks. I consider if, this an invasion of my privacy that you're coming by my house and scanning it. Okay, well, it's just something. I, I really the, do. I, I don't understand this. It's just something the city does. And look, I understand if you're upset because we caught you, but like if you're lying. No, I, I'm upset because you're coming by my house and scanning my house. And you know, it's like I feel like I'm in a communist country. What? Oh, come on! Don't be ridiculous. That's why. No, that that'd be no. F- I mean, that's ridiculous that you're scanning my home. Well, we're just scanning for uh, hold on a second violations. You, you that- can talk to my husband. Oh, I don't really want to. Just like hello? just hello. Yes. Hey there. I I don't know why she's so upset. I was just letting her know that if, if you guys do have an incandescent toaster in your house, you need to replace it. If I have what? Uh, in the, you know the old style toaster. Because their uh, energy, they're not very efficient. We don't have we don't have a toaster. We don't have a toaster for years. Okay, like I was telling her, that's pretty weird. But if you guys are lying, and if you do have a toaster, could you just buy the new style? You know, just go out and buy a new one. 
We really don't have a toaster. I haven't had toast over a year. We don't have any bread in the house. Okay. Well, it's very weird that our scanners would have picked up that you're operating a incandescent Your toaster. Scanners. What kind of scanners? Oh, we drive by with vans and just scan the inside of houses for infractions. You have what? The city drives by in vans uh, every few months or so and just this kind of... the city of... Correct, yeah. So just, Why you know, would just, you drive by my house and scan my house? Well, it's, scan it with what? Uh, you know, I don't understand the technology. It's just something they scan. It, it like, detects CFL bulbs and incandescent toasters and you know just things like that. People still using tube TVs. They're, that's not allowed anymore. What's well, not allowed? Uh, you know, those old tube TVs, those big ones? It's not allowed by who? By the city. So anyway, we can't tell me what kind of TV I have. Oh, no, we can tell. The tube TVs give off a certain signature, like a radiation signature. Oh, I'm sure they do. We shouldn't be scanning it, but you cite me the law that says that I, if you can tell me what kind of TV I can own. Oh, well, you go ahead and buy a tube TV. See what happens. Who do you work for? The city of... I'm in the comfort. All right, give me your boss's name. Uh, well, that, that would be Carol. She's... She's over in the other office. I can get her. Well, you give me your boss's name, and I'm going to go to the mayor. You guys shouldn't be scanning my house and doing that. And well, if you, it's not like X-rays. Really, it's not like it's going to hurt you. It's just you know, don't be afraid of new technology. I don't really, but you, what I, your what I, what I own and what I do in my house really isn't your business. Well, <laughs> well, it is if you're if you're using a you know an incandescent no, toaster. No, it's not. You, you, we'll get into citing the code. You're going to have to cite me the government law that says whether I can, you can tell me what kind of TV I can have in my house. Now, I realize you can't purchase stuff because they've outlawed it, but they can't pass the law to my knowledge that says that I have to dispose of something. Oh, you can purchase a tube TV. You just can't, don't be using it inside the city limits. Well, then the mayor needs to go because you shite me the ordinance where it says he says I can what kind of TV I can have. Well, I think you need to go if you're stupid enough to use a tube TV. Those things just suck up so much energy. So you're calling me, you're representing the city of and you're calling me stupid. Well, just if you were, I know you say you're not using you're, a tube I TV. I pay your salary, mister. No, you don't. No, no, you're, you're wrong. I don't pay the taxes, pay taxes to the city of yeah, but, you know, we get, like, federal grants and stuff, so some of it comes from that. You don't pay all of my salary. Um, I pay taxes to the federal government. I bet I pay more taxes in a year than you pay get paid in a year. Oh, you don't know how much I get paid. Well, so, what's so your you're, name? You're just bragging about your income now? You're trying to, like, talk down to what's me? What's your like, name? Like, you're a better person because maybe you make a little more money than me? What's your name? R- real nice attitude there, pal. What's your name? This is Steve Dave. What? Steve Dave. Steve? So look, you're just, it sounds name? like you're just someone that wants to argue about nothing. Just buy a new toaster. This doesn't have to be a big deal. If you make so much damn money, I don't buy own a, a toaster. toaster. And I, I don't care the fact that you're telling me, calling me about telling me what kind of appliances I can or can't have. If you're gonna so b- I want to know what department in the city of... I already told you, and I told your wife. You guys just don't listen very well. You know, for making so much money, you sure don't listen very well. Mister, what department are you in? I'm in the, I'm in the comptroller's office. So you're in the comptroller's department of. If you make so much money, just go out and buy a new toaster. Just quit pretending that you don't have an incandescent toaster in there. What? That's all you have to do. And your name is Steve. You don't have to like make a big deal of this. Just go buy a new toaster. No, I'm go- I'm going to. I'm going to make a big deal of this. For what reason? Just because you're bored? Because I don't need people calling me and be insulting me over the phone. Are you are you hoping to come to like a public meeting and brag about how much money you make? I like guess what, everyone Mr. at this meeting, I pay your, your salaries name. and I make Just more money than you name. do. You're in the comptroller's office, and your name is Steve. What's your last name? Steve Dave. Dave. Yeah, D A Y S. D A Y S. That's all yep. I really need. Yep. Oh, you're gonna get me fired, aren't you? Because you're a rich person. And no, I'm not. I don't You care. like to get the lower. I, I got an issue with the mayor. That this is what they're doing. 
you have no business tell, calling me and talking to me about what I what I appliances I have in my house or what I'm doing. Sounds like you just want to push your anti bread agenda on everyone else. I not. I don't care what anybody else does. Well, if they're for, welcome for to own whatever toaster they have or eat whatever they both, want. Both, I can care less. Both you and I'm your not wife calling them up and telling them what to do. You are going on and on about not eating bread. You're the one that's like, going. You on look and at on. me. Anyway, uh, you know I have other people to call. So why don't gonna... you give me the what's your boss's name? It's Carol. Carol, and what's Carol's last guy? name? Carol Gersperms. I can put her on. Fine, put her on. All right, hold on. All of our representatives are currently busy. Please stay on the line, and your call will be answered by the next available representative. Shut the fuck up. You're a fucking cunt. Shut the fuck up. You're a stupid cunt. Suck my dick. Shut the fuck up. Hello, this is yeah, Carol. This Can I help you? <laughs> oh, hopefully you guys heard that because I kind of talked over him, but it took him that much of the song to finally decide this isn't real. Yeah, this isn't real. Holy shit. Okay. That was so much fun. Hello? Hi, Mary? Yes? Hey there, this is Tim Henson from the city of... Uh-huh. I was calling to let you know that there's going to be some workmen on your, in your front yard tomorrow. They're going to be just kind of plowing the front yard. Why are you going to be plowing my front yard? Oh, they're, they're just um, taking over a small portion of it for uh, just to stock up on food in case we need it for the pandemic. I'm confused. Oh, yeah. It's just uh, a lot of the grassy area. It's going to be turned into kind of, you know, a thing for crops. It's mostly going to be corn. In my front yard? Yes, ma'am. Where in my front yard? Uh, just you know, in most of it, they they just set aside like uh, just a quarter of an acre. Who did? The city of. I'm I'm here in the uh, comptroller's office. This is Tim Henson. I'm confused. Are you talking about my property at 48 Street? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, it's it's just the the a large portion of the front yard is going to be uh, just dedicated toward corn crops for the city for everyone but you you can't go you can't go taking it yourself though it's got to be you can't inside my fence yes ma'am how can you put take my yard away and go inside my fence and put in a garden and then say and you can't have any of this but we're going to rip up your yard well it's it's because of the pandemic that doesn't we're, make we're, any sense to me. we're afraid the pandemic's going to go on even longer so we're just preparing for the worst, you know. We're all in this together. No, we I'm sorry. Gotta... No, this this is not making any sense to me at all. Yeah. Where exactly are you? And you're with a day's notice. You're just going to go inside my fence yard, correct? And rip up my landscaping. Yeah, we sent a letter, and we know your yard's not that nice. So don't pretend it's that nice. Did you get the letter we sent? No. I don't live there. Oh, who lives there? Is it a tenant? Yes. Oh, yeah. Why do you even care then? It's just a tenant. You need to let them know that their yard is going to be ripped up tomorrow. It's my yard. It's full of... I've got my stuff there. Well, I've got a deck and fencing and... Yeah, we won't mess with the fencing. Raised flower beds and... Well, it's the tenants though. Like, do the tenants take care of it? I don't know. I haven't been out there to look because I can't get across the FN West Seattle Bridge. Well, sounds like maybe you just don't take enough interest in your property. <gasps> Are you kidding me? What? I cannot believe that you're talking to me like this. I, I am sorry. Well, it just seems like you're, you're not even, me, you don't even know if they're taking care of your... Let me take your name. Ma'am, you're, you're, is, you're, it's, you're making a big deal out of nothing. Yes, it's, this is a big deal. So what is your name? Tim? Yeah. How do you spell it? Tim, T I M B. And what's the last name? Henson. H E N S O N. And don't say, oh, are you related to Jim Henson? Because I get that all the time. No, I do not want, I don't care. I'm not, this is not funny to me. 
I'm not trying and to be funny. And what's your job know. title? I'm I'm in the comptroller's office. I'm the office yeah, assistant. Yeah, but that's not a title. I'm the office assistant. Okay. Make sure to write down that you're being a total B. <gasps> what? What's your phone number? It's on your caller ID. Don't you see it? Caller IDs don't mean anything. This, what you do, can't. What do you mean it do, doesn't mean? I am, I am just shocked that you are behaving. Oh, my God. You're a city employee. I know, but you're. Uh, my taxpayers pay your salary, and you're. You're acting like you don't have to help out and be a part of the team and, and you let us plant crops crops in your yard. At least it's not the house you no, live in. No, I don't have to let you plant crops in my yard. You have to ask permission. No, it's no. It's my property. It's not yours. I just paid a $3,200 property tax bill. Yeah, but, you know, like it's, it's basically our property. You're just renting it from us. I am not. It's my property. I own it. Yeah, but, you know, do you really ever own anything? It's, you know, it's really the city's <gasps> property. It is and, not the city's property. Oh, my gosh. Ma'am, it's... What's your telephone number? You, you pay your, your yearly rent to us, and we let you stay there. If you stop paying your rent, guess what's going to happen? You get kicked out, just like the if you're in an apartment. The only thing that you have, the you, only thing that you have a right to is the easement outside my fence. You do not have the right to well, just commandeer my property. Normally, we don't have pandemics, but we have a pandemic right but now. But that, so, that doesn't mean that you can... I'm going to call the Attorney General's office. Why are I mean, you so against helping other people? I am not against helping other people. It's the way that you have called me with... 24-hour notice saying you're going to come in and dig up my yard and then acting like I, what's wrong with me because I'm upset or outraged at, I can't even describe this. Well, I think it's crazy that you just don't want to, don't want to help out. Like, you know, it's just, it's but just But you crops. didn't ask me, you didn't call me and say, well, Will you help out? That's not what you, what happened here. It sounds like you just have a personal thing against me. Well, that could be because I the uh, well, stop, I'm going to stop look letting into your dumb sense. little emotions get in the way. <gasps> you've called me a bitch. You've called me dumb. You said the b word. I, I just said you're being a b. Then you've called me dumb. No, I said your dumb little. I said your emotions are dumb, not you. Okay, I I don't have to take this from a city employee. I am going to follow up, and don't you dare touch my yard. I forgot how many gasps I got out of that lady in that call. That's got to be some kind of a record, right? And the reason I was saying my name is Tim Henson is because Tim Henson is the host of one of my most favorite podcasts ever called Distorted View. Everybody should be listening to that. And sometimes I like to impersonate him while calling up people using his phone number as my caller ID. And that way he gets a bunch of angry calls back from people that I've prank called. And he plays them on his show and he complains about me. It's the best thing ever. Please go listen to Distorted View if you haven't done that already. That's the least I can do is promote his show when I'm causing problems for him. He seriously doesn't mind though. I've asked him if he wants me to stop. He's like, nah, it's okay. Go ahead. So next we are going to hear a Milk Door call. I'm pretty sure Milk Door calls started in 2020. I don't really even remember where that idea came from. I think I was just reading something on the internet about Milk Doors and I'd never heard of them before. So I started doing a bunch of Milk Door calls for a while. I need to do some more of those again. Those were fun. Hello. Hi, John. Yes. Hey, it's Carol down the street. Yes. Hey, uh, I was just hoping you could stop opening up our milk door and looking in. And peeking in like that, that's weird. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, our milk door. You keep opening up our milk door and, you know, we're, we're inside here. You, you can't be doing that. That's like looking in our window. I'm sorry, but I don't do that, ma'am. You got the wrong person. Oh, no, we don't, you. We have one of those doorbell cameras. So I don't just, know what you're talking about. Sir, just please stop messing with our milk door. That, that's not yours. You what leave, are you talking about? You, you, leave our, you leave our milk door alone. What are you talking about? Our milk door. You keep looking at our milk door and you're, you're tapping on it. 
Just I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. You cut that out, John. We don't appreciate ma that. Ma excuse uh, what, Where do you live? I live on um, Parkway. You keep opening up our milk door and peeking in and making faces at the kids. It's weird. Ma'am, you got the wrong person. Oh, I do not. I know it's you. You need to cut that out. Um, Ma'am, if, if you don't quit bothering me, I will call the police. I'm not bothering you. You're bothering yes, us. Yes, you are. Looking, looking at our milk yes, door you all are. the time. You've got, you've got, Ma'am, you've got the wrong person. You know, I thought... Way wrong. I thought it you was... Don't even know, I, you I, don't even I, know who I am. I thought it was one of my kids. They, like, shot a rubber band at the back of my head. Now I know it was you shooting it through my milk door. That's not funny. You're crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. This conversation is over. I'm you're crazy. just absolutely. Uh, you are. You're crazy. You're, you got you're the, the wrong person. You owe me an apology. No, Bye. you're you're the one going around the neighborhood with the milk doors. Hello. Hi, Andrew. Yes. Hey, it's Carol. It's your neighbor. Hi. Hey. Hey, can you stop coming over here and writing on my window, on my car window, in the frost? I'm sorry. Uh, you keep writing your name in my window. Can, can you please just not do that anymore? I, that's not me, ma'am. Oh, I know it's you. I, I followed the footprints back to your house. I live here on the same street. I guess you just walk by here a lot, and you're always writing your name in the frost or in the, or in the early mornings. No, that's not me. I'm sorry if it looks like it's me, but... That's... Well, I, I, who else would write your name on here? says Andrew. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for someone who might be doing that. Oh, I know. It's, like, look, do you have a crush on me or something? I'm is sorry. Who is, um, excuse me. Um, who is Ma'am, ma I think your husband has a crush on me because he keeps writing Andrew loves Carol. Number one, number one, he is a very good man. He is one of the best men I know. <sighs> and we're not married yet. Okay. He, well, I, you might you want to reconsider because us. he's writing excuse little hearts, hearts on my excuse window me. in the frost. You do not, you do not have any right to have falsely accused my wonderful boyfriend. He is one of the best men I have ever met in my entire life. He is a very good, God-ridden man. He believes in the Lord, and he is such a wonderful man. And, you know, and I'm shaken right now for even having that kind of an accusation and pull across us. If you somewhat as even know what my boyfriend yeah. looks like. Oh, I know what he looks like. What does he look like? Oh, yeah? What does he look like, then? Well, he's not that attractive. If, you want to, if, I, if I'm being honest, he's not very attractive. That's rude. I would, that not, I would rude. not be interested I need in you him. to explain that to me, and I need your name and your phone number. Ma'am, why, why are you taking control of the situation? Give the phone back to the man. No. Yes. Because he doesn't need to be treated like this. Well. And I want to handle this the correct way. Listen, ma'am, you and I would like tell him to stay away from my window, my car window. I, Where do you even live? We I, don't even know who you are. I, yeah, I don't know you guys either. I don't know why he's writing on my window. Clearly you little, don't know us. With little hearts. Clearly you don't know us. What's your name and where do you live? I already said my name's Carol. I live on the street. He needs to stop writing on my window. Your name is Carol and you live on the street. Yeah, good job repeating that. What's, what's so listen, our address? Listen, you just tell, no, what is our address? You, you tell that, that boyfriend of yours... Does it stay away from what my car? What is your car? address, ma'am? I'm not telling what you. What is your address? Just ask your ask your husband to be your wonderful husband. You know what? Because he knows what it is. I don't know what you're on or who you think you are, but I am reporting this to the police because that is very wrong of you. And I do not want you anywhere boyfriend. near my home. I do not want you anywhere near my home. I'm my not boyfriend near your home. Go on walks. Your your boyfriend's you coming near my home, like right on my window. All right, Carol, I'm going to figure out who you are, and I am calling the cops on you. I don't give There's you permission no to do that. This. No, no, don't do that. You don't, I don't have to have permission to be able to call the cops on you. Listen here, Because lady. this is a free country. Hello? Talisha? Yes? Hey, uh, this is Greg. I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of your neighbors. I live like five blocks from you. Uh-huh. Um, are you home right now? You say your name is Greg? Yeah, yeah, I don't know you or anything. Um, me and my roommates, we're, uh, we're physics students over at the, the IUPUI, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, we, we've made this uh, egg launcher. We're getting ready to launch a bunch of eggs at your house from five blocks away. 
I was wondering if you could what? go. We we're we're physics students, and we've we've devised the system. It's like a oh I forget I I, I know what they're called, but I don't know how to pronounce it because I'm not a history student. How but, did you get my number? Uh, I looked it up on the internet, and also one of my roommates is a hacker. So we're getting ready to launch. What? Listen, we're getting ready to launch eggs, like a, about three dozen eggs, and they're all going to land on your roof. And I was wondering if you could go out there and tell us if they hit on target. Because there's, there's only four of us here, and we need all of us here to uh, record the data and, and to pull the, the, the thing. Are you serious? Trebuchet. Trebuchet. Yeah, yeah, you know, like one of those things from that, that movie about faxing human beings to the past. How did you get my work number? Oh, this is your work number? I don't know. Um, th- that, that, would, that would have been uh, Chad. He's the hacker. And he looked it up. I don't know. Are you home right now, though? Do not launch any eggs at my house. No, they're just going to hit the roof. Like, you could stand on your front porch, and they won't touch you. As no, lo- why did you pick me? Why did you pick me? Oh, no, it's nothing personal. It's just um, you are in direct, you know, like, just the perfect angle from our house. Like, no, please don't. You don't have permission to do that. No, they're just going to hit your roof, and, and they'll, they'll just get washed away. don't have permission to do that. They'll just get washed away, and they're right. You're going to see eggshells, like, in your gutter. You don't have permission to do that. Ma'am, it's, we're just physics students. You know, it's, it's just like a weird little... You don't have permission to do that. Ma'am, we're bored out of our minds with this fucking COVID. We, you we do just... not have permission to do that. But I don't think we need permission, because you're five blocks from us. We could just say it was an accident. I I thought you'd and, and you are my you are being recorded because you called my work number so they record all phone calls. Where, so where, if you say it's an accident, I gotta record. Where do you work at? Don't worry about it. Well, are, you're not home then. Don't worry about it. Can you just go out and tell us if the eggs hit? No, I'm going to. I'm gonna call the police. No, don't call the. Get the cell phone and let me call the police. No, don't do that. Come on, we're we're just students. Like we're we're not. We don't mean any harm. Because I don't even know how y'all calling my work. Y'all calling my work phone with this. I told you, Chad's a hacker. He got your number. We're we're physics students, ma'am. We we know how to do things. But ma'am. Yeah, I know how to do things too. Okay. I'm gonna call the cops. No, don't and do give that. Give them okay. your number. Okay. And let them talk to you. Okay, look, I'm gonna come clean with you. We're we're not really physics students, and we're not really launching eggs at your house. Okay. Uh, ma'am. How may I help you? I don't have time to play games. Okay, no, I wasn't playing games. I'm actually with uh, Royco's Distraction Services, and um, I was hired to distract you for exactly. Three minutes and forty-five seconds, and um, I'm done. I've distracted you. I've successfully completed my contract. Oh no! I wanted to butt slam her. Maybe I should call her back. Let's do a proper butt slam. Hello. Okay, listen, ma'am. I'm actually with the local radio station, WKRP. Um, and and <laughs> I was just kidding. Wait, yes. Ma'am. Yeah, yeah, I was just messing with you. You have been... You've just been... Butt, butt, butt slammed. On the Gerbil and the Butt Show. 100.3, the Gerbil. Did we, we had you going, didn't we? What? Who had you to prank me? Uh, do, do, you know, do you know someone named Brittany? Who? Brittany. Do you know Brittany? I think she said she worked with you or something. <laughs> we no, got, I don't know Brittany. We got you good. We we sure got you, didn't I we? I don't know Brittany. Yeah. See, if you hadn't called me on this phone, I would have got you. But I was trying to keep it professional because you called my work phone, and I ain't going to cut your ass out. Oh, thank God, then, because, you know, we would have had to edit all that out on the radio. Because we're totally on the radio right now. You're on oh, the you air. you on the radio? Yeah, you're on the air right now. What's your favorite station? B-103 Chicago. Oh, fu- ah, fuck, ah, fuck, fuck ah. you. Fuck you, lady. Oh, she hung up on me. That's something I like to try and do whenever people threaten to call the police. And if I think they're actually going to call the police, I will just come clean with them. I'll tell them it's a prank call. But usually I 
still fly to them and tell them they got butt slammed and then they're angry about the butt slam i mean she enjoyed it at least but some people are like no you can't put me on the radio i don't give you permission and i'm like i'm gonna do it anyway i'm a loose cannon wacky morning dj guy nobody can stop me and they're still pissed but they're not gonna call the police then it's the perfect plan i have two prank calls left that are in this list here and then i'm i'm done it's been two hours now i am done with this I have listened to almost all of these pranks in real time just to make sure it's good stuff and you guys will enjoy it and I'm about ready to quit. So the first of the two prank calls is a call to a uh, hotel. I think this is one of my very first COVID related calls. Or did I mention COVID in this one? I don't remember. I just remember I was coding things with Vaseline. Here, let's play the call. Thank you for calling one of those We can have my director call. Oh, well, I'm uh, staying in the hotel right now. I was wondering if you have a ladder I could borrow so I can get up to the ceiling. Mm, you'll have to speak with our housekeepers outside. Oh, okay. How do I do that? I just go find them. Yes, they're outside. Okay. Well, why can't why can't mm -hmm. why can't you just radio them and ask if they have a damn ladder? Who am I speaking with? Uh, my name is Roy. I just need to get up to Roy? the ceiling. I need I need to get up to the, my ceiling in my room. That's all. Okay, what room number are you on? 120 still. Okay. Well, I'll try to send somebody right there. Okay. Well, are they going to bring a ladder? Let's see if we have one. I'll call you back when I find out for you. Okay. I just need to get up to the ceiling, though. I I'm going to coat the entire ceiling with Vaseline. Uh, let me speak with the manager, and I'll get back to you at that. Um, we'll just put the manager on the phone. I'll talk to him. Hi, this is Debbie. How can I help you? Oh, hey, Debbie. I was just trying to ask him if I could have a ladder. He was getting kind of snippy with me. No, I cannot give you a ladder. Okay. Well, wow, you're even worse I'm than I'm sorry. Him. I just need to get up to the ceiling, I'm though. not trying to be snippy. I, I, just, I know, but what do you need to get to the ceiling for? Well, because I'm coating everything in, in my room with Vaseline, like the surface of everything with Vaseline for the coronavirus. Okay, you don't need to... We'll have... Housekeeping's going to come and wipe it completely off? Oh, yeah, after I leave. N no, uh, we have the right to enter your property every day. Well, that's fine. It's just uh, I'm coating everything. I'm coating the television, the walls, the table, the doors. Okay, it was already sanitized because of the coronavirus. If you saw our sign in the front, it was mm -hmm. already done sanitized. I know, but we I'm... Have four you know what Vaseline is, right? I know what Vaseline is, sir. Very familiar with it. Okay. Oh. And you don't need to do that. In fact, I would prefer that you didn't do that because that's more work for my housekeeping. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm smeared. clean it off. I, I brought in like two five-gallon buckets of Vaseline just so I could coat everything in the room with Vaseline. So it's like in the, in the television, on the, the pictures and the walls. I'm just coating everything, like big, gloopy mess of Vaseline all over everything. Okay, and when did you check? You checked in last Saturday? Yeah, yeah. It's just, but, you know, the, the, the whole corona thing is just really heating up now. So I, I bought in, I got some five-gallon buckets of Vaseline. I'm coating everything with Vaseline. Okay, sir, you don't need to coat the stuff with Vaseline. I'm trying to be your friend right now and explain to you. We are very up-to-date on the coronavirus. In fact, as of tomorrow, we are only handling 50% occupancy ah. for the whole hotel. So we are doing everything possible for the coronavirus. The way we're cleaning the rooms mm -hmm. is beyond what we did before. If you look underneath, perhaps like underneath your, your sink where there is a pipe, it's called a, a P-trap, you will even see that's cleaned. We are going beyond. So you putting the Vaseline on the televisions and everything like that is not necessary. In fact, it's, it's not recommended. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's too late. It's very unsanitary. It's too late. I've already coated everything with Vaseline. I'm, I, except the ceiling. I was hoping to get a ladder so I could coat the ceiling. No, absolutely. The, the I light. cannot give you a ladder, and I would like you not to Vaseline my ceiling, please. Okay. I, I coated the light fixtures with Vaseline and the lamp, the shower, and the toilet. I coated everything with Vaseline carpet 
You're joking, correct? No, I wouldn't kid about this. The, the, the coronavirus is very serious, ma'am. Okay, sir. Yes? And you're in room 120? Correct, yeah. With Charles? Correct. So Char Charles is helping okay. me code everything with Vaseline. Okay, and what is your name? Roy. Okay, Roy, you're not even a registered guest. Well, yeah. You're he, not even supposed to, He's the one You're not even supposed to be at my hotel. Well, and I have been very lenient with Charles. Is Charles there? He's busy. I let Charles have a microwave, which is not permitted. And we, I let him have a microwave on the premises. So I have gone beyond being a general manager and being a personal person. And what you are doing... I am going to have to ask you to leave the premises. Well, we coated the microwave with Vaseline and the fridge. Okay. I am going to have to ask you all to leave the premises. But we just coated... We this just, is unacceptable. We just spent I a don't bunch of money it. on Vaseline. You, you should have asked us beforehand. Before going, the, you are a tenant. You are renting a property. Even, You're not the owner of the property. So just like when you live with your parents, you have to obey your parents' rules. Oh, These never, are not our rules. These, our rules do not say anything about vaselining anything. Right. So what I'm going to need to do So there is, is no rule. I'm, You're making it up. Okay. I'm li giving you notice that I would like you to vacate the property. You're just making up and rules. And if you do not... All willy-nilly. Okay, making I'm making up, up the rule. Then, okay, I'm the GM. I can make up any rule I want right now. And I would prefer you to vacate the property. So, you can take your, your microwave. I will refund for your money for today. And you need to find another hotel to stay at. But I just car I coated the carpet with Vaseline. I don't care. I don't really care that the you've air done... The coated the... I, I got Vaseline in all the vents and all the little vent holes and stuff and with Vaseline. Sir, you're not a registered guest, so please have Charles give me a call. Okay, but okay. Um, the, the, it's hard to use the phone. We have to use our cell phone because the phone's covered in Vaseline. Have Charles give me a call. I'll just come down there. No, okay? don't, don't come down here. I'll, I'll come I'll, down. Thank I'll you. I'll coat you in Vaseline. <laughs> That call is actually based on real life. I've seen news stories where this guy kept going to different hotel rooms and coating everything in the room with Vaseline. And it was just a massive amount of damage, you know? They had to just gut the whole room and start from scratch because you can't really clean Vaseline off of everything. He was putting it pretty much everywhere I said that I was putting it. And luckily for that lady, I was just a prank caller. I wasn't that guy. So I'm sure she was very relieved to not find one of her rooms coated in Vaseline. I would have loved to hear her conversation with that guy though. Like her demanding to come in the room and then find out that nothing has Vaseline on it. He doesn't even have any Vaseline. He probably just thought she was crazy or on drugs or something. So the last call that I'm gonna play in this show is a trailer park call, which is the same thing I was doing yesterday on the Hobo Sode. If you haven't heard that yet, I did some brand new trailer park calls. But this one is from a live show that happened last summer. The date on this one is June 6th of 2020. And the only reason I remember that this was a live show is because I remember this being a suggestion from the chat room. Someone wanted me to tell my landlord at the trailer park that I have turned my trailer into an Antifa safe house. Hello? Hey, I'm a tenant. I'm, I, live okay. here, I live here in the park, you know? Okay. How you doing? Fine. That's good. Hey, um, I turned my trailer into a safe house for disabled Antifa members. I'm sorry, and who who am I speaking to? This is Roy. Roy. Yeah, what the, lot number the, you in? Way down there at the end. Okay, what lot number? Uh, fifty-seven twelve. So, uh, 57, I just I just wanted to let I'm you know sorry. there's gonna be what park do you live on? Ma'am, don't interrupt me. There's gonna be a lot of people just kind of coming and going. No, 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 no. What park do you live in? Mobile home park. Okay. And you're turning it into a what? It's uh, it's a safe house for disabled Antifa members. Okay, no, we don't allow that. Um, no, there's nothing in the rule book about that. So I'm just letting you know. You there's cannot, gonna, yeah. There's going to be people coming. It, it, we've got a community. That, 
then I mean, if you want to do that, that's that's on you. I'll just evict the trailer. No, because we've got a that. community there. Yes, I can. This is a thing we've for my church. We've got a community there. It's this thing for my. Huh? Ch- it's this is a thing for my church. It's the thing I'm doing with my church. You but, want you want to put Antifa members in our park? There's nothing wrong is with that what you're An- There's nothing wrong with Antifa members. Some of them are already here. Okay, they're, they're I'm telling on- you. I'm telling you that we can't have a safe house on a property where there are people living. No, it's, it's we don't allow safe. <sighs> ma'am, there's there's a church van on the way, and they're going to have uh, approximately 12, 12 Antifa members. They're going to just going to stay here. Okay. But, you do that, I'll have the sheriff's department over there shutting it down, and I'll take you straight to court. What? For a ch- because this is it's a, a church- residential property. It's a church It's van. a residential property. Durr, we're gonna there leave. are not going to be a safe Durr. house for Antifa on my property. What we you, own the land. What do you have if against... If you don't like that, you can move the trailer off your property. Ma'am, what do you have against Antifa? I don't have anything against anybody. I'm telling you, this is a residential mobile home park that I have busted my butt on since we bought it, and I don't care who you are that, or what you do, you're not putting a sick house on my mobile home park. Well, it sounds like... That's what I'm telling you. It sounds like you're just being kind of racist. I'm not being racist. Did, did I say anything about any type of color, skin, or gender, or anything else? Well, you don't want Antifa people. I said people. it is a residential park, and you're not putting a safe house on my park. You don't like it, take me to court. Because ma'am. I'll be glad to take you to court. Ma'am. Tell me what lot number you're in. I already did. Ma'am, listen. One of the Antifa guys gives me really good weed, and it sounds like you need it. What's would your you, last name? Would you like me to What's come over? What's your last name? Would you like me to come over, and and I'll share some of my weed with you? I don't smoke dope. That, that's the problem. And my park does not have drugs on it. Well, no, it's not drugs. It's just weed. What is your last name? Zerbel. Okay, you don't even live on my fucking park. No, ma'am. That's, that's I know everybody who lives on my park. That's my Christian name. I don't they, give a shit what your Christian name is. What is your real name that is on your list? On your lease? On my list. Ma'am. On your lease. Have you ever thought about joining? Who owns the home? I think if you were to join Antifa and see what we're all about, you would... I think maybe you should kiss my fucking ass. I'm not joining any of your fucking little organizations. Ma'am, you really need I'm some... I'm telling you, you're not going on to my park. You really need some, Period. Of this, some of this weed. No, I already live here. I already live here. And okay, there, one, a... we don't have an address called 5712. I didn't say 5712. There's already three Antifa members in here. They've been here for like three days. But I just got permission. What is your lot number? I got permission from my because church. I don't have a boy that lives on my park. I got per- that's my Christian name. I got permission from my church to, um, you know, bust some people. What in. mobile home do you live in? Well, the way you're yelling at me and and saying you don't even want to smoke weed with me, I don't. Well, when I see all the cars coming out, because all I have to do is watch my camera. It's not going to be all the cars. So it would be really easy if you could work this out with me, so it's, we can move on. It's just going to be the church van. It's like a blue church van. It's like an extended van. <gasps> Why don't you tell me what lot you live on before you guys go around terrorizing my property? We're not terrorizing anything. It's just a safe house. We're we're peaceful people. Not on my property, it's not. And if you were a tenant of my property, you would know that I'm not going to allow a safe house on my property. Okay. Because if you knew me at all, you would know that's not how it's going to go down. Yeah. Why do you have cameras? It's like a police state around here. I have cameras all over my property, so therefore you're not a tenant on my property. Because you would know that. No, I, I, I do know... it to protect my tenants from individuals such as this. From, from other races, apparently. No, did I ever say anything about a race? I am not you racist. Ha- you don't have to say it. I, why are you harassing me? Because obviously you don't live on my property. I do too, And if Lydia. anybody comes into my property, you're going to regret it. You are so grouchy, ma'am. I'm not grouchy. You're telling me you're bringing Antifa onto my property. What? It's not going to happen. What's, this is private property. What's wrong with Antifa? Like, what do you have against Antifa? I don't know. Why don't you figure it out? Why don't you tell me what's wrong with them? There, there's nothing wrong with them. They're good people. Yeah, that's how the Trump just labeled them a terrorist they're, group. They're friends of mine. So why don't you tell me what's wrong with them? Yeah, Trump, Trump's ridiculous, though. Come on. He says all kinds no, of things. You no, know how he, he is. He is the president of the United States. Yeah, I don't care but, what your feelings is. But, I wouldn't care whether it was Barack Obama, Pence, fucking Pelosi. If they're the president of the goddamn United States, they are, and you will respect the okay, way they should. Ma'am, 
Would you like to come to my house? You are house? not bringing anybody on my property. Would you like I promise you, I know every Kanawha County Sheriff, and I'll have it locked down quick. Would, would you like to come to my trailer and meditate with me? It sounds like you really need to meditate and get in touch Why with yourself. Why don't you tell me what trailer you're in, and I'll come over and meditate with you. You need to, like, just take a look at, at yourself, like, the inside. You just, just kind of clear. I do clear. look at myself. Oh, I am a ew. damn good person. Gross. I help people every day. I put homeless people in a home every single day. I have been doing it for 18 years. Yeah, but I, I, I put black, white, oriental, purple, pink. I don't give a shit. They need help. They come to me I've because I help them. I've lived here forever. Because that's who I am. I've never seen a purple person here once. It doesn't matter. You said that's there was purple people. And I've never seen a purple everybody. person here. I help everybody, no matter who they you're, are. You're making Race, things up. Gender, you're making green. things up. You, you just said there's green people. I've never seen a green person. Okay, what the fuck is your point in calling me? I, I'm just making a prank call. I don't even live in that state. You know what? Go fuck yourself, you little piece of fucking dog shit. You call my phone again, I'll have your ass. Ooh, nice. Fucking motherfucker. <laughs> What a fun call that was. That was a perfect one to end this show on. Man, so many of these. Like, now that I tried to call that one lady back, I'm just wondering why I didn't write down all of these people's numbers so that I could call them all back a year later and see what they thought of my prank call after they've had time to reflect on the whole thing. I really suck for only writing two numbers down last year. I am going to do that more this year, starting with the very next episode that I do. I mean, if there is anything worth writing somebody's phone number down for, I'm not just going to call anybody, but somebody like that would have been great to call back, or the kitty creeper lady, or that hotel lady coating the hotel in Vaseline. I would love to ask her if she was relieved when she found out there was no Vaseline in the room. But no, I didn't write any of these down. I need to start doing that. That is my pledge for the next 100 episodes. I will write down more numbers. So that's pretty much it. I guess the show's over. I think I'm going to play a few voicemails, because why not? I won't play a billion of them like I usually do. I'll just, you know, I'll do three of them. Let's play three voicemails. Uh, hey, Brad. It's hey. Corbin Guy. Corbin yeah, guy. haven't called in a while. Love ya. Doing great. Fucking enjoying the show. I didn't Thank ask. Thank you. Yeah, I kind of tune out to tune back in. <laughs> yeah, Guess what, one. listeners? Support this guy. Go to his Patreon page. Drop a bill. That's right, Corbin guy. I agree with everything you said. Everybody should be going over to the Patreon page. And also, everybody should stop listening so they can start listening again and rediscover the joy of this amazing show. Hey, Brad, it's Mr. Taco. Hey, Mr. Taco. Oh, no, you're cutting out, Mr. Taco. You're doing good. I still listen to your show whenever you put them out, Yay. which, uh, you know, hasn't been very often lately, but that's yeah. okay. I know you're moving. But anyway, uh, in this time that you haven't been putting out shows, I've been listening to uh, this podcast called The Darknet Diaries. Oh, yeah. And on episode 39... They talk about your old friend Skunk Works. Yeah, that's how I found out about the Darknet Diaries, is because of their Skunk Work episode, and I've been listening to them ever since. I don't listen to every episode, but I listen to a lot of episodes. Like, uh, the most recent one I listened to was the one about Jenny, who used to go around social engineering people and breaking into houses and stuff. That was a really cool episode. There's a lot of cool stuff in that podcast, so I highly recommend that one to everybody. Not just for the Skunk Works material, but for everything else. There's a lot of good stuff there. And uh, they really detail, like, the inner workings of his tunnel system. I know. And I thought it was really interesting. Yeah. And I won't give you any more details because oh, you should probably just listen to it. Anyway, it was I'm entertaining. I'm not going to do it. Not as entertaining as your show. Brad, I love you. Oh, I disagree. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Mr. Taco. Yeah, I've seen a few stories about Skunk Works. There was one on YouTube recently that I watched, and it had a bunch of new information in it. I wish I could remember what that's called, but I've completely forgotten. Hey, Brad, it's Mike Corgi calling you uh, from my payphone uh, through Project NF, so I had the blue box to get into Whoa. you. So, Your volume is really, really low. I'm going to turn it up when I do the post-editing, but it's super low. You know, God damn it, fix your shit. I hope you've been doing well. I'm finally listening to the show again. I'm not labored down by school and work and band practices. But hey, we're going to start playing gigs again, and I got some Clash Show stickers on my keyboard. So hopefully you get some more listeners and some more of that sweet Patreon money. I hope so. Well, 
You have a good one, Brad. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, keep being awesome. And cactus, cactus. All right. I love you. Wow, that was an awesome little disconnection noise. I felt like I was in the 1960s there for a second. All right, just 10 more voicemails. No, I'm kidding. I said just three voicemails. The show is over. The show's over two hours long now. Nobody needs that much show. But I guess it's the least I can do with the terrible amount of shows I've been doing lately. I will be doing another snowplow show this week. And I hope I'm not lying to you about that. I fully intend to. That's the only other thing I have to do this week. I want to try and get a show done every single day if I can, but I always say that and then something comes up and it doesn't happen. But yeah, there will be another snowplow show this week. I'm sorry there has been a really huge lack of them lately, but it wouldn't seem like such a lack of shows if you were a supporter of the show over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash phone losers. Just like today's sponsors are Vocock Meat, Vokoviak, Marcus Biscuit, the Sailboat, Unavailable Restaurant, and Carl. Those are the sponsors of today's show. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the show over on Patreon. That helps keep the show going. As you can tell by my output recently, I probably would have just completely quit for several months while I get all this moving stuff done. I've been really busy lately. And just a warning, in a couple weeks, I am going to be taking a trip for uh, six days, I think. I'll be leaving the state of Oregon, so my goal is, until that time, I'm going to try and do as many shows as I possibly can so that you don't miss me too much during that week. So be looking forward to a bunch of new shows over the next at least one week, and maybe I'll even save one up to release in the middle of my trip. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thanks for forcing me to do so many shows that I have to do best of shows every hundredth episode. I actually had a lot of fun doing this today, so I definitely should do this again on episode 800, assuming I last that long at this show. I still can't believe I've made it to 700 episodes, but somehow I have. If you're a new listener, this show was designed for you, basically, so I guess that means I need to give out some links. I've already given out the Patreon, patreon.com slash phone losers. To listen to more episodes of the Snowplow Show, go to snowplowshow.com. And to be updated on just general happenings, we have a Twitter account, twitter.com slash phone losers. I also try to post everything that I post on there on facebook.com slash phone losers, but I don't always do that. Twitter's the best place to keep up to date on everything. I do a lot more best of shows on the Mr. Dobelina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls show, which you can find at worldprankcalls.com. There's a bunch of stuff on that site, so check out that site, listen to the podcast. I've been trying to play more of other people's stuff on there recently, so it's a good way to check out the entire prank call community and see what everyone's up to, see what kind of pranks everybody's been doing. For other things, go to phonelosers.com. That's where I used to post the Hang Up the Phone show, but I kind of stopped doing that. But once I get my studio all set up here, maybe I will start doing that again. Start taking some calls on the payphone and stuff. What else do I do? I don't know. I've been doing a show with Giad lately. Me, Giad, Dwight, Devin, Wasted Memory, Snappy Bakes. A bunch of us have been getting together and doing crazy prank calls to people who think they're being interviewed and taking calls on the air, but really they're not taking calls from listeners. They're taking calls from us and we're asking them insane questions and usually they get pretty confused. It's kind of fun. You can find those on Giad's YouTube page at youtube.com slash Jesus in a dump truck. There are just a few episodes out. This is a relatively new show, so go check that out. You won't regret it, especially that first episode. I love that first one. We talked to some dog experts. And check out all the other shows that are available. There are live shows every single day of the week by people other than me. There's one happening right now, in fact. I'm completely missing it because I've been doing this all day. Wasted Memory is doing a live show right now, but I have a big old list of all of the different prank call shows the live shows and the podcasts over on worldofprankcalls.com. Go look at that list and find some prank calls that you like. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for supporting the show. Here is some MC Rection. Your milk door? 